everybody. Peace, 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 peace. Welcome to the midweek live stream. Hi, Super D has a cold. Can you believe it? So I'm a little bit late today because I've been fighting off the cold and a headache. It never ends, does it? This year, let me tell you. Let me tell you, if it's not IBS, then it's... Um, then I had the, the coughing thing, which is not COVID, something else for five weeks. Then I get the operation and now I catch the cold. Does this ever end? No, it doesn't. We're constantly battling something. Hey, Evian, ah, Jacob, you look so beautiful and fresh. Thank you. Well, you know, I showered, took a bath. I mean, I've been sick since Sunday. So it's been like three days of oh, sweating it out. And today was my shower day. <laughs> So I wanted to be cutesy for you guys. And, uh, you know, I'm all kind of uh, aspirin up uh, for the show. Hi, Thomas Tallhammer. How's it going? Hi, MJ, MJ, Music Girl 07. Hi, Evian. I know. I hope this will end soon. Hi, Despina. Oh, you got a cold as well. Oh, boy. We're twinning on every level. Hi, Corey Emerson, Carrie Fernandez. Love the citrus color palette. Oh, the background. Thank you. I'm like, wait a minute. Am I wearing something yellow? I'm not wearing nothing yellow. But uh, the background is yellow. Ish, ish. Hi, Angela Y. Uh, hi, Crybaby Zagi. Hi, Barbara. Oh, hi, dear Jacob. So wonderful to see you. Hope you get over the cold soon. Thank you, guys. It just never ends, does it? It's like we're constantly battling something. Hey, baby, lift. Thank you for thumbing up the live stream, you guys. Thumb up the live stream. Hi, Andrea Myers. How's it going, Andy? Hi, Vicente. Poor baby. Hope you feel better. Thank you. Yeah, I hope so, too. Liz M says, hi, Jacob. Your hair looks gorgeous. Thank you, guys. Yeah, it's very long. It's it's getting there. It's longer and longer and longer and long. It's, it's like, what do we do? I don't know what to do with it anymore. I always walk around with a bun at this point. Um, you know, ugh, such a mess. Sorry to hear about your hubby, Corey, that he's being laid off. I hope he finds something super soon. And uh, don't worry about the membership. You know, it is what it is, you guys. Don't, don't, don't stress about that. Carrie says, it reminds me of rainbow uh, sorbet, you mean, without the pink? Uh, <clears throat> oh, seasonal allergies. Thank goodness. Knock on wood. I've kind of like lowered down on the level of seasonal allergies a little bit because I've been like doing a lot of honey, seasonal honey. Well, I, I think it helps. I mean, it helped me after so many years. Uh, hi, Kev. Very Rapunzel, right? Hi, Letty. Hi, Jacob and Fashion Banka. Sounds like your body is doing a major bad energy purge through illness. <clears throat> Sometimes it's a blessing in disguise. I hope you get better soon, darling. Well, it's either that or somebody has jinxed me. You think some you think a hater out there might have might be doing some voodoo. <laughs> be careful, haters. You're not the only witch in this house. Hmm. Hey, Maldol. Whoop, Jacob is always the best part of my Wednesday. Hey, Maldol, how's it going, sweetie? Oh, yeah, Barbara, always. We always stay positive. There's always, they, it can always be worse, you guys. For sure, it can always be better. But it can always be, be worse. Oh, yeah, Manti. Yeah, you, I'm going to call Sabrina. Sabrina got nothing on me, girl. Nothing. Oh, ring, 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 ring. Hello? Sabrina, darling. Yes. Yes, it's your favorite warlock, Jacob. Yes, I know I'm a vampire. Yes, you can be a warlock and a vampire. At the, you can be both at the same... No, you can be both at the... Mm, you can be both at the same time. Okay? Okay. So, girl, are you watching the live stream, Sabrina? Yeah. Listen, girl, we still got to talk about what she did to Elvira. Yeah, no, not liking it. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Did you did you apologize to Elvira? You didn't? Well, then I got nothing to say to you. Nothing. 
Nothing. Go apologize to her and then you can call me back. You know that a witch without a W, but you put a B instead of the W and you get what you is. Yeah. Yeah. Hello? Hel the witch hung up on me yet again. Typical. Anyway, everything I say in this uh, live stream is for entertainment purposes only. Not rooted in truths or facts. Everything's alleged, just my opinion. Obviously, the phone calls, if they do happen, they're not really happening. I have to say it just in case somebody out there really thinks that the phone call. <laughs> like, does anybody really think? I know my acting skills are wugo, wugo. Wugo, wugo. I know the Oscar is wugo, wugo. But it was not a real phone call. Okay. So anyway, uh, dropped in at Chanel Beauty Boutique, Comet, not in yet, says, oh, speaking of Comet, I have doth been enjoying it. By the way, first of all, for our rewatch crew, whoever is watching the live stream after it happens, be sure to thumb up the video or live stream now and to leave in the comment section down below for the rewatch crew the timestamp when a topic begins and then the title of the topic as well, because that helps me immensely to create chapters later on. So thank you guys so much for your help. Ah, okay, we'll go, we'll go. Hi, Don Donuts. Could have fooled me, Meryl Streep, says Kev, right? Hey, Deb Shops. Hey, Gloria K. Kimberly Johnson. Grass Simpa. Well, Comet is not in yet. In Montreal, yeah. Hi, Saya. How's it going? Jacob, looking fabulous as always. Thank you. You too, sweetie. Thank you. Uh, oh, Letty just watched the review of Comet. I'm going to my Chanel beauty counter tomorrow to see if they have an amazing review. By the way, I loved it. Can't wait to smell the perfume. So my review of Comet, it's been two years since we started talking about the rumors of the new Les Exclusives fragrance. My review of Comet is out on Essentially Jacob, my perfume YouTube channel. So if you wish to watch the in-depth review of this little beauty here, uh, the brand new uh, released uh, Chanel Les Exclusives, be sure to check me out on my perfume channel. That's Essentially Jacob, uh, spelled a little bit weirdly like Essence, E-S-S-E-N-C-E -S -S -E -E minus T-I-A-L-L-Y, like essence, tiali, essentially, I know, whatever. I could have chosen a better name for the perfume channel, but uh, hey, yeah, no. I guess all the, uh, uh, all the Jeremy fragrance uh, names were already taken. <laughs> the tonsil stones were taken. So the only thing that was left was essentially Jacob. I-Y-K-Y-K. -Y -K. So, uh, so um, no, but I have a little update. So, of course, if you watch the review, I mean, I've been waiting for many years for this perfume. And, of course, technically we've been waiting four years for the perfume, but two years since rumors of La Lune started circulating and then the La Lune changed to commit. Anyway, long story short, all those details are in that video, but right now I just want to give a little update now that I'm kind of sick and my nose is a little bit, you know, clogged, I still have my sense of smell, but um, less, less, and uh, kind of my nose filters through some smells more than others, so I don't get the full spectrum of the fragrance. So now it's a little bit more pleasant and light, and yes, indeed, if we are to sniff it when we got the sniffles, we do get more of a shampoo-y vibe. Now, I know we were dreading the, you know, uh, lotion-y shampoo beauty parlor level on this one, uh, and it does not have it. If, you, if your nose is fully functioning, it is very deep. The heliotrope is very intense in here, and the musks. It's not a simple perfume. Um, but now that my nose is clogged up, I can't really smell the uh, the depth of the bitter almond in there uh, and less of the heliotrope. So I get more of that uh, softer tone, softer nuance. But I can also tell you on Saturday, I sprayed it on after the live stream and I went out to dinner and... Uh, 
I had it on my crew neck. So I sprayed it like here and then, so it touched my sleeve, you know, it touched the cuff. Then I took the crew neck off. That was Saturday to Sunday. And then this morning, uh, I lifted, uh, I had the, the crew neck in a corner of the room and I kind of lifted it up and I get a waft of, of perfume. And I'm like, oh, wow. Okay, so three days later, that's what I'm trying to tell you guys. Three days later, it was still lingering on my sleeve. It has a heft. Don't, don't get fooled by people in reviews telling you it lasts five minutes. No, not true. It really has uh, longevity. Uh, hi, Jason. Uh, to me, it smells unisex. I mean, some people might say, oh, because it's sweet, sickly sweet, it has that heliotrope. You might say it's uh, feminine, not to me. N no, not, not to me. The iris in there also is very beautiful, you know. It's a similar iris uh, that Olivier Polge put into Dior Homme back in the early 2000s. Yeah, he worked on that perfume. Uh, and as you guys know, when Dior Homme was first released in 2004, a lot of men out there were thinking, oh, too powdery, the iris smells like makeup, uh, this is not for men, blah, blah, blah. And then, you know, the guys got used to it, right? And it's a beautiful perfume. And then after a couple of years, Dior Homme, the original, not the one currently available, the original became a huge iconic fragrance. So it's all about perception and how we get used to certain smells. Also certain colors, you know, sometimes um, you might think, well, I'm wearing lilac -y and pink colors. You know, you might think, oh, pink is for women. not for. That's also not true. <laughs> you know, in the Renaissance period and a little bit later again, uh, boys were wearing pink, girls were wearing baby blue. Uh, things change. It's a cultural thing. Uh, so don't uh, let anybody ever restrain you in terms of enjoying what you enjoy. Somebody, could you imagine somebody shaming you for liking the color pink or lilac because just because you have a penis? And so they're like, no, you have a penis, so you can't like pink and lilac. And then you feel bad about liking pink and lilac. And then you kind of, fr that frustrates you. And that's not good. That's not healthy. That's not healthy for your psyche. Do not limit yourself, people, really. Uh, feel free to love what you love, as long as you're not hurting anybody else, obviously. You know what I mean? Hi, Astrid. Hi, Chris Du. I won't uh, get to smell it until May in Canada. Correct. It is arriving in May. So you guys are going to, Letty, you as well, you're going to have to wait until May, unless your boutique doesn't receive it a little bit earlier, and then they kind of let you sniff it under the counter. For the re-watchers, let me repeat this again. Everybody who's watching again uh, the, the stream, please, in the comment section down below, write down the timestamp for every topic that begins with the title. It helps me then generate chapters. But I've said this already a couple of minutes ago, so I... Anyway, saying it again now. My husband looks super sexy in pink shirts. There you go, T-Pal. I'm telling you, do what you do. Hey, Terry, how's it going? Teresa McGuire in the house. Hey, Terry, we're sick again. <laughs> Can you believe? <laughs> Jason says, I just got a 1990s vintage bottle of Egoist. It's so good. That's another one of those perfumes that in the 90s, when Chanel released it, a lot of men thought, ooh, too, you know, the sandalwood and the softness, the powdery notes in it, uh, the little bit of, of clove in there, you know, smells very feminine, but no, you know, perfume knows no gender. Hi, Louie, how's it going? Baby Lift, how's it going? Love yourself, MJ, MJ. Yeah, good advice, Jacob. Thanks, Baby Lift. I always love the education. There we go, Tanya Brosnan. How's it going, my love? Hey, Kanisa. Oh, my God. I thought I was already subscribed. Just sub now. Love you, Jacob. Love you too, sweetie. Thank you so much for subscribing, you guys. Thumb up. Oh, sorry. My little table here is shifting thumb up the live stream and uh, thank you guys so much for tuning in Teresa says I just told hubby I thought you sounded like you had a cold feel better soon Terry I have a cold I got a cold on Sunday can you believe like I, I can never get a minute's rest you guys I just like heal from one thing and then I get sick with another thing so after my surgery my um scars are healing um I got several scars so one of them is still kind of crusty, which is okay. 
uh, I'm not forcing the crusts to fall off. I'm letting them fall off at the, on their own time. You know what I mean? I'm not, I'm not a peeler, although I'm tempted. I'm tempted. I'm tempted. <laughs> but I don't want to hurt the skin underneath, so I'm not going to peel the crusts. That's the worst thing you can do. Just let them fall off when they're ready to fall off. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'm not picking out a Deb. No, no, no. I'm I'm respecting the crust. <laughs> I'm respecting the crust, y'all. Hold on, let me turn the fan on. Oof, no, I'm sweating. Yeah, it's this cold, you guys. I can't. Um, pers ah, Miss Personality. How's it going, sweetie? Try the silicone scar tape, you guys. Okay, so if anybody's grossed out easily, close your ears for a second. It's not too gross what I'm about to say, but... Um, one of my scars, so the, all, all three were covered with, with the special tape, but one got, um, an allergic, one part got allergic reaction to the tape, got so itchy and I, it all bubbled up. Ugh. So anyway, so I cannot put any form of tape, silicone or not on them. They are just in the open air and they're healing in the open air because I got an allergic reaction. So that looked awkward, uh, but then I put some um, uh, cortisone cream, you know, and that that made the itching go away immediately, and now it's healing. Ch I mean, I'm a mess <laughs> at this point. And at this point, you guys, I know it's not Halloween yet, but I feel like I am the monster of Frankenstein. Like I'm all glued together, put together, bits and bobs. So we are going through it, Louis. Yeah. Oh, love Manuka honey, Caroline. Hi, Caroline. I love Manuka honey. I really do. It's really, it's a bit pricey, y'all. But you know, hi, Johnny. Don't open the door to infect. No, no, no. I'm not opening the door to infection. I'm leaving the crusts to crust. <laughs> hi, Nina Nina. How's it going? Oh, wow. Your review of Comet Oh, Jacob. It is wonderful. I have to watch it again and again. Oh, man, Nina. Thank you so much. You guys, very kind. Thank you. Uh, yeah. No, Corey, I'm good now. It doesn't itch anymore. But Corey says a little Aquaphor will help it not itch. Literally, I put the cortisone cream on ju just that night when I saw the allergy and, and then it stopped. And then it stopped and I didn't put on the the band-aid anymore and it's okay you guys it, it's it's much better it's much better i'm not complaining i'm not complaining uh sorry for my sniffles i'm gonna be kind of like sniffing my own snots fun but uh hey how fashionable right uh Hi, Afke Art. Hi, everybody. My first live Super Deco. Hi, Afke. How's it going, sweetie? Welcome to the live chats. Apologies for my cold. C. Brown says, exactly. Let the air help it heal. Yes. Oh, my gosh, you guys. The air really, really helps it heal a lot. It really does. It really, really does. Um, you know, uh, <clears throat> and uh, my doctor did prescribe a really nice little cream to... Like in general, if you get a cut or something, um, it's uh, like iodine cream. So it's very orangey and it doesn't sting like alcohol would. So you can put a little bit of iodine cream around the area that's irritated. That helps a lot. I'm not, I'm not allergic to that. So that was a really good cream that my doctor uh, prescribed to me. And, uh, but I don't use it anymore because now the, the wounds are all sealed and... Um, Thankfully, not irritated anymore, you know. Um, so, Corinna, I, I mean, it is, uh, it is, I'm keeping it minimally moist to minimize the, the scar. It is because, I mean, it's not like in an open, it's not like here on an open place that really dries up. It's, you know, it's covered up by clothes all the time. So that part of my body is never like dry, dry. So that's good. Alcohol is the worst with wounds, says Johnny. And Johnny's a nurse, by the way. You know, <clears throat> the, you know what I'm worried about? I'm worried about, you know, ever since the lockdown, I gained some weight. And then, you know, trying to get down from the weight. It, so my surgery happened while I have more weight. 
so now I'm scared that it, when I lose weight, when the skin then comes retracts, I'm scared that the scar will be more visible. I feel like the scar is less visible when I'm more, when I'm fuller. And when I deflate, I'm scared that it's going to be more visible. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. But anyway, um, that's, that's kind of, oh, it won't be? Oh, okay. Good. Well, good to know. That's kind of something I've been a little bit worried about. But, uh, but if you guys say it's not a problem, cool. That's good to know. Yeah. T-Pal uses hypochlorous spray, and Johnny says that's good. Hmm. <laughs> Kev, is it be below the bikini line? <laughs> Kev. It's above, it's below, it's everywhere. And um, so let's just say <laughs> we're going to have to do a lot of makeup to retouch it. Um, you know, oh, bio oil, like organic oil helped you reduce the appearance of the scar. Says Krabib Yuzagi. Oh, Castagna says laser also helps. Well, we're not there yet, you know. I mean, let, let's see how these scars heal on their own. And then let's see if, if I'm going to talk to the doctor about lasers or not. Who knows? Oh, Terry, my love, thank Teresa you so much. Teresa McGuire donated $75. Feel better soon. Look what we got. The tip of shit. <laughs> Hermes, darling, what are you doing to us? Let's blow... Confetti for Terry from our Frisbee of shame. <laughs> shame. <gasps> thank you, Terry. Always so kind and generous. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, yeah, that, we'll go. We'll go. There you go. That's how we do it, baby. Corey K says, there are scar revision creams that you can use, but wait until the wounds are completely healed before using. Yeah, good idea. And uh, Cinnamon Roll says, use alpha arbutin or arbut arbutin, arbutin, arbutin for uh, decoloration. Embrace the scars. They tell a story. This is Corey. Uh, Vsense, yeah, this is plastic. What else should it be? Leather? <laughs> no. It's um, it's, uh, it's plastic. Yeah, it's the Hermes Frisbee, you guys. It's back, you know. <laughs> it has a little logo on the inside. Can you see it? There you go. Oh, this reflects the light nicely. You get to see how Hermes works the bottom. Of, oh, yeah, made in France. Yes, it is. Yes, it's made in Frenchy. You know. I use it as a plate sometimes. You can put snacks on it. You can wear it as a hat. <laughs> and, uh, oh, use it as a Frisbee. Nina says, aloe vera fresh is amazing for skin healing, but you're rather way dig. Yeah, I'll wait a little bit. I'll wait a little bit. Hi, Alyssa, how's it going? Hey, Miriam Hovard. Uh, vitamin E oil, anti-keloid scar cream to keep it smooth. I've had several surgeries and you can't see the scars anymore. Oh, that's fabulous. Thank goodness that you guys are leaving all of these comments in, in the chats because then later when I'm, I, I can't write stuff down now, obviously, but later when I rewatch the live stream, uh, thanks to your chats, I can find, um, all of the notes that you left me, you know, and then I can write it down for myself. So I get the name of all of these creams and stuff. Yeah, because that helps always, you know, in the chats. We always share really good information in the chats. Also, you know what I was... Okay, so some funny stuff that happened this week. So I discovered this, well, a while ago. Uh, and, and this is... Uh, I, is it funny? Is it sad? It's sad. It's sad, uh, but it's funny. And, of course, again, it comes from the penal colonies. Uh <laughs> Of course, we're going to have haters coming from uh, the penal colonies. Um, so here we go. I, I I discovered this one channel. I don't think I have ever seen somebody so show so much hate. 
publicly, and I'm I, and I'm I'm talking about not even scared to publicly share the hate, like to throw so much hate and shade at another content creator. Uh, it it's so ugly that it's entertaining. I know it's so bad, like it's so. There's this uh, one and. Uh, this lady, she is a piece of work. Let me tell you, she doesn't show her face. Her name is Priscilla. We don't know. Okay, I'm not, what? Yeah, she's going against uh, YouTube guidelines. Uh, so what am I supposed to do now? Okay, what am I supposed to do now? Jesus Christ. Okay, what what does this mean for me now? Nothing. <laughs> like So anyway, you guys, I'm getting No, now we're going to finish this. So anyway, um anyway. Right. So we believe she's going against community guidelines. So, I am not endorsing her in any way shape or form. Period. Period. However, however, this is the point that I was so shocked that somebody can make a gazillion videos spewing such vile hate towards another content creator, like to the point of nausea, where you're thinking to yourself, well, this person cannot possibly loathe another person so much. I mean, they're obsessed with them. So maybe they're secretly in love with them. So made me think about this thin line between, you know, we were talking about this many months ago about like the opposite of like, you know, what's the opposite of hate? Uh, you know, what's the opposite of love? And then we, we can't, do you guys remember a couple of you were in the chats a couple of months ago and we were talking about this and then we, we came to the conclusion that the opposite of hate is not, uh, the opposite of love is not hate. But, uh, what, what did we say? Like lack of empathy. I think we, I think we said the opposite of love is total lack of empathy. Um, it, Carrie Fernandez, right? We had that conversation. Yeah. Carrie says, I remember. And uh, apathy. Oh, hi, Adrian of Sydney. And opposite of hate is ignorance. No, wait. La Jota. I, I, mm, ignorance, opposite of hate? You mean opposite of love? Oh, Terry, you remember as well? Yeah, we had... Oh, that's a good one, Barbara. Opposite of love is also fear. Lack of self-love. Yeah, you see what I mean? Like... When we open this jar, I don't want to say can of worms because obviously talk about love is always a good thing. Uh, so a good thing. Um, it's very fascinating because, you know, a lot of people think, well, the opposite of love is hate, but it's not, you know. Uh, it's something more complicated. I, I think something more complex. Uh Lack of self-love. Nina Nina says, Evian, I know because one of the fashion bunkeries noticed and comment was gone. Awful. Some people can't think for themselves so bad. Wait, what happened, Nina Nina? A comment disappeared? What? Which? Do you know that somebody wrote a comment in, in Fragrantica using basically everything you said in your review of comment? <gasps> Someone from the... Uh, from the Fashion Bunker noticed and the comment was deleted. I can't believe some people. I had no clue. When did that happen? Wait, so they took everything I said one to one and they did not even credit me? Okay. I mean, it wouldn't be the first time it happens, but geez, Louise. Wow. Yeah, 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 Evian, that's a good point. Nina, do you have a screenshot? 
I always take a screenshot when something like this happens. Boy, oh boy. Oh, jealousy comes from fear. Oh, that's a good one, Nina Nina. Yeah, Deb says, it is more complex, like a lack of being able to actually feel. That's a sociopath. That's a good point, Deb. Babylift says, the opposite of love is misunderstood. Hmm. Mm. Well, no, maybe misunderstanding because... Hmm. Terry says, people like that usually have something going on uh, with their self internally, so they lash out on others and put others down to feel better about themselves. Completely agree with you. I think so. I think so. Tipo says, dang, tell that whomever to send a screenshot to Deco. <laughs> Deb says, people are a piece of work. They should have just credited Deco. I mean, really. Wow. Hi, Oshidi. How's it going? Hey, Vsen says, that's terrible. The shade says, hello, Barbara Rank. Uh, the shade. Wow. And there's a photo under that review. Wait a minute, Kev. You saw the review? There's a photo? Wait, but the reviews on Fragrantica don't have photos, you guys. I've never seen a photo of a person reviewing it. Yeah, I don't know. But if the comment is gone, we can't. Why are we scrolling through it? We can't. Uh... Uh, wait, why are we looking at this? Oh, okay. So I'm on Fragrantica now. <clears throat> so somebody commented, I am so happy to add this lovely fragrance to my Chanel collection. I'm not fond of the strength of the almond in the opening, but it subsides within a few minutes. In eight to 10 minutes, it becomes a sweet, airy, powdery floral gem with amazing silage. Chanel is not known for sweet fragrances. This is sweet without becoming gourmand. Yeah, I did say that. <laughs> I walked into another store with it only sprayed on my hand and the associate told me I smelled wonderful. Don't let the cherry blossom scare you. It doesn't smell like shampoo. And then somebody, two comments later, commented, sounds like you've watched recent Super Deco review on YouTube and copy-pasted all of his thoughts. Cha. People should stop reviewing fragrances after sniffing them for the first time or at least don't pretend it's a review. Ouch. Um. Cha. Hey, good morning, Audrey. Wow. Okay, I took the screenshot, y'all. Ouch. Ouch. And I love how they now call me SD. I'm just an abbreviation. I'm not... As you watched SD. I-Y-K-Y-K. -Y -Y SD. Um, Nina Nina says, awful. I hate it. And I thought you didn't know, Dick. I did not know. No, I just found it now. I just found it now because you, I just found it now. I just read it now. Uh, Tipa says, make it an emoji, SD. Can you believe, though? But did they answer? They never replied, right? This other, this other person never wrote back. Maybe because they don't know what the abbreviation SD means. Cha. Maybe they're a fan. I like to think people have good intentions, says Vsense. They should have credited you, though. Yeah. I don't know. But but maybe I'm not the only person who came to this conclusion that uh, it never really becomes too sweet. Although you remember in the review, I do say like it's a there's a DNA in the center and then it kind of pokes in different direction, the perfume. But it never really goes extreme. It's very conservative. You know, Chanel perfumes have that conservative vibe about them. So it almost goes to gourmand, but it doesn't. It almost goes shampooy, but it doesn't. You know, it. it it pokes in all of these directions, but it kind of right when it, it almost becomes obnoxious, but it doesn't, you know, it's almost nauseous, but it isn't, you know, mm. and uh, that's something that I find very fascinating uh, about Chanel perfume, that balance, that gorgeous balance that they manage to always keep in check, you know, because if a perfumer isn't that good at what they're doing, they'll be messy. They'll be me somewhere inside the formulation. They will be messy and you will sniff it out. You will sniff out when something is going to, when something is off, you'll sniff, you'll, you'll smell it. You know, with Chanel, no, it's always very, 
it, it sustains itself. It's always very hermetic in a, in a way. And some people don't like that. Some people do. Um, I appreciate that from Chanel, but some people, of course, love louder fragrances. Some people love when a fragrance is a little bit screechy. You know, and that's fine too. You know, a different, uh, d different tastes for everyone, and uh, one is not better than the other. You know, but this conservative aspect of Chanel perfumes is what I love about them in particular, personally. Oh, thank you, Nina. Nina, no, Jacob, yours is the only in-depth and accurate review. At least that's what I've seen. Thank you. Why Diamonds by Elizabeth Taylor, t -Pal. That one is screechy, but let me tell you why. It's because it's been reformulated a lot of times, and right now it falls in the cheapy category. So Why Diamonds wasn't always screechy. Passion by Elizabeth Taylor wasn't always screechy. The first formulations that came out in the 80s of, of Passion, I mean, uh, different level, different planet different planet, the, the quality of that perfume in its inception was really, really top-notch. Now, you know, I still love Elizabeth Taylor's passion, but it's been watered down considerably, considerably, <clears throat> you know. Ah, Vicente, interesting. Why Diamonds reminded, reminds you of the older J'adore formula. I mean, there's something about that. You know. Avka Art says, I didn't see Super Dacob in the reviews on Fragrantica. That's because Super Dacob doesn't have a profile there and never will. <laughs> You're not going to see me there. Eva. Um, you will see me on my perfume channel. Essentially Dacob. So... Somebody saw my review video and then went to Fragrantica to comment, I think. That's what happened. Evian says, why diamonds is my favorite. It reminds me of my childhood. My mom wore it every day. Yeah, the connection that perfumes give us to our past. That's such a beautiful thing about perfumes. That connection that we have to the past. It's really, really gorgeous. Love that. Love that for us. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Deb Shop says, you're getting famous now since they are abbreviating you to SD, right? Speaking of fame, my dears, I am working really hard to get healthy by the weekend because on the weekend I'm going to a theater show and let me blend my, my dear friend and very talented artist, Teruko Nakajima, let me blend in the poster. She will be performing her well, one man, one woman show and one dog show made in America this coming Saturday, April 13th at 7.30 p.m. at the Lyric Hyperion. So I urge you to get your tickets. They're only $20, you guys. Uh, it's a wonderful, wonderful show, heartbreaking, heartwarming and full of hope. And yes, I will be there. I'm in the audience. This is not my show. I'm there to support Teruko. Uh, I am not there to uh, do anything else but sit down in the uh, uh, in the um, in the theater and and watch the show. But uh, for whoever wishes to come, there's still a couple of tickets left. You can get your tickets at uh, terukonakajima.com at her website directly. So that is www.terukonaka. J I M A dot com. Terukonakajima.com. Uh, the show is not too long. It's a it's around about an hour. And uh, I'm not gonna do any spoilers, but uh, it it does it it's 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 a biographical, autobiographical piece. It, it's a comedy, but uh, of course you're gonna cry. And uh, look at all the awards that she won. Look at that. Winner. Critic Choice Award, uh, what is this? I can't even read. Encore Choice Award, winner, Best Solo Show Hollywood Fringe Festival 2022. Winner, Pick of the Fringe Hollywood Fringe Festival 2022. Winner, Hollywood Fringe Festival Scholarship. Winner, Ch Namba Arts Solo Splash Award. Winner, 
the Hollywood Encore, and another one I can't read too small, a ton of awards. It's really, 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 really a good show. So I'm going to be there, and in case you want to say hi, you know, I'll be there. <laughs> be kind. <laughs> I get a little bit of um, social anxiety uh, if there's too many people, but uh, I'll manage. I'll manage, okay? I'll manage. Uh Tipa says, Teruko is funny. I looked her up. Teruko is amazing. Yes, she, she has it in her in her genes to be funny. She, definitely. Um, oh, thank you, Afke Art. Going to sub to the perfume channel now. I like the old vintage fragrances. Miss Balma used to be my signature scent until they reformulated vintage. Kabosha is my other favorite. So Titi and Teruko, that is Titi, the gorgeous, 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 gorgeous little doggy, also going to be in the show. Uh, with Teruko on stage. Yeah, you best believe Titi is very well behaved and very well trained. Um, and um, oh, Deb Shop says, I might stop to say hi, Super D. SD. Well, get yourself a ticket. Like I said, the tickets are 20 bucks. They're going really fast. And by the way, by the way, I was supposed to, you know, also be there for the, for the first show, but uh, I was at the hospital, so I couldn't. So there you have that. So, but, uh, it sold out. Uh, and uh, so the first show sold out. So the Lyric Hyperion said, Teruko, would you like to do an encore? Would you like to do a second show? We would love to have you again because you sold out. You literally sold out. So she said, yes, let's do the second show. And uh, that's why this show is happening now because the first one sold out completely. Uh, and I'm sure this one is going to sell out as well. Although, although the they announced that the show is happening like really um, last minute, so you know, let's let's get let's get the theater full. That's what I'm saying. Let's get the theater full because you know, it, it's not easy uh, in LA. Things are very expensive, and uh, also obviously you have to imagine if an artist. Uh, books a theater, the artist has to pay for the theater. So, but Teruko is very, very humble and she doesn't want to over, overcharge her audience. So she doesn't want to charge more than $20 a ticket. That's why I'm telling you, um, she's a very, very fair, fair artist. So there's that. Uh, I'm going to be there and I'm working on healing and getting completely healed. Come close to me at your own risk. I mean, by then, I don't think I'm going to be infective anymore. I mean, uh, this thing started on Sunday. So by Saturday, it's going to be a whole week. You know, if I don't get better by Saturday, I'm not going to come. Obviously, I don't want to be that irresponsible person uh, that then uh, spreads the germs to the rest of the world. Uh, but I am already today feeling much better than I was feeling yesterday. So that's a good sign. So bear that in mind. And uh, before the show, I will be live streaming. So you guys, uh, so on Saturday, this is Saturday, right? So before the before the Teruko's show, I will be live streaming. Um, and I'll, I'll let you know. I'll let you know on Saturday during the live stream how I'm doing, you know, health-wise. So we're going to have an update. You know what I mean? So, Terry, the live stream will be before the show on Saturday. Yeah, the live stream is going to happen before the show. This is 7.30 LA time. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, there you go. So, maybe I'll see you there. Oh, it's going to be fabulous. You know, say hi as you're passing by and going to your seats or after when you when the show is over. Uh so there you go. Nina Nina says, but be careful, Jacob. You need to remember you're sensitive in this stage of your healing. Yes. So I will not be uh, exposed too long, you know what I mean, to uh, the masses. Uh, <clears throat> I will be quickly saying hi. And then I'll be rushing off to heal. 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 So anyway, we got over 200 people watching and we got 117 likes. Can we get to 200 likes, you guys? Pretty please. Thank y'all. 
Deb says, I saw Teruko's show last month. It was excellent. Birkin, 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 Birkin. Hermes, Birkin, Birkin, Birkin. Kelly Bag, um, uh, Mr. Beast. I also want to say Bitcoin. What other keywords must we use to have our current viewers jump to 500 like we did last week? That was incredible. We just started talking about the Hermes Birkin situation and uh, viewers jumped to 500. This week, it seems like YouTube fixed that glitch because we're still uh, over 200 viewers, but uh, we're not. <laughs> it's like you say the trigger word Birkin and uh, shit goes down. <clears throat> but Kev, the views have been great recently. Yeah, we've been training the algorithm to um, not feed it new videos until the video that's been posted has exhausted all the possible views because if you keep posting too many videos that kills off the algorithm for the prior posted video so it seems to be working better if you let a video breathe a couple of days before you post the next video so that's kind of a little bit what's going on lately uh, trying to experiment in that direction let's see how long it takes because as you guys know or as you guys might not know but I'm gonna tell ya YouTube keeps changing the algorithm right so so all of my strategy right now might just fall into the wind uh, a week from now because YouTube might change their algorithm again and when they change their algorithm you got to change your strategy again so for now, it seems to be working like this, but it might not work like this anymore next week. So let's see. You never know. You know, YouTube is a very volatile, very volatile place. You can't really fully trust it. Unfortunately, I wish I could. I wish I could, but nothing. Oh, thank you, Katerina Jones says, your outfit is delightful, Jacob. Thank you so much. Thank you, sweetie. Uh, so, so yeah. Okay, now the fan is irritating me. Let me turn it off. Child, it's, it's like, you, it's like, I don't know. It's like I'm in menopause or something. I turn the fan on, it's too cold. I turn the fan off, it's too hot. What's wrong here? Uh, so, Nina Nina says, Sup SD is a great friend. Supporting others and thinking about others. Oh, forgot to like. Guys, thumb up the live stream. Thank you. Thank you, Nina Nina. Uh, <clears throat> Yanina says, oh, really? I like that. Sometimes the overflow of content makes me dizzy. Yeah, sometimes it's better to uh, to slow it down a little bit. I agree. Mm. But like I said, it, it comes and goes. There's a tendency in the air. You know, people feel a certain way and then they don't. And it's kind of a, there's this mass energy you feel. I, at least I think that I feel something. Despina says, I would love to watch Teruko and Titi. I'm so far away. Oh, Despina. It's amazing. I mean, hopefully she's going to get the show also on, you know, some streaming website. That would be amazing. But, you know, that's a long way from now. First, it's going to go to theaters and then we'll see. Oh, Audrey, the weather is insane. Plus, you guys, there's something to be said about this uh, sun eclipse. I don't know. I feel like there's an energy uh, because I feel like the eclipse left us all so empty. I don't know. I, I felt like maybe partially one of the reasons why I got sick was I'm a very sensitive person. I like I feel all these energies. I feel like the eclipse had something to do with this energy hole that I felt like I sunk into. And now that it has passed, I feel like I'm recuperating. Like now I feel like I'm getting back to my... Do I sound totally crazy? Maybe I sound totally crazy, you guys. Like, don't get scared. I'm not an esoteric weirdo. I, like, I can, I can hear reason. Don't worry, you guys. <laughs> Andy says, my dog started barking as it was getting dark. Yeah, 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 yeah. Animals reacting insanely to, to this change. Audrey says, yes, I agree. It's like, it's all linked. Right, Audrey? 
Johnny says two minutes and 33 seconds of pure energy in my hometown. Wonderful. Oh, so you felt a, an, ups, an uptick in energy. You see, I felt a hole. I felt lack of energy. Deb says they say we're going to be swamped with bugs post-eclipse. The, the cicadas going to be out of control. Well, but then I heard also, uh, what's her name? <laughs> I watched The View. Whoopi Goldberg saying, no, they just come every 17 years anyway. So it's not connected, she says. La Jota says, I think there is a renew of energy, if that makes any sense for me. Yeah, Louis, I feel you. Uh, for me, it feels like now that the solar eclipse has passed, I feel now we're getting final, like to me, it feels like now the new year is beginning, like this whole cleansing of negative energies and health situation and all that stuff that I've been experiencing since January. Personally, I feel like now something has clicked and it feels better. It feels like now I'm not doing two steps forward, five steps back. But I feel now I can kind of start slowly building a solid base on top of which to build a healthy house. While a couple of months ago, I felt like everything I was building was unstable. I just felt that the energy was not, it didn't feel solid to me. Now it feels like there's tabula rasa. Like now it feels like everything has been swept away. And now we finally have like an empty thing to, to build on top of. Maybe I'm completely wrong. Kev, me too. I've been feeling more restless for sure. For sure. Interesting SD. I'm in Dallas, says Afke Art. Um, I experienced the totality. I wanted to experience one for ages. And this time I finally made it amazing. But I was strangely totally drained afterwards and yesterday too. That's the thing. That's what I'm talking about. Alyssa says, I slept the entire day. My body was purging because it was also that time of the month. I was in bed as well. Monday, yeah, okay, I was sick. But coincidence? I'm, I, I think not. I think not. Monday, I was, I felt like a train passed over me. And no matter how long I slept and then I woke up, and I would lay down again. I would sleep again like I didn't sleep for 10 hours. It was insane. Everything after the eclipse. Isn't that interesting? The eclipse coincides with the Netflix show Three Body Problem. Oh, I wa Aperol Spritz. I watched that show. I did. The Three Body Problem. Yeah. Uh, I watched the show. Uh, Frozen Luxury says Smashing Pumpkins. Uh, wait. No, I missed it. And I'll scroll up again. Uh, the world is a vampire. Cheers, sweetie. Debsov says, so Mercury is in retrograde from April 1st to 24th. Oh my God, really? Right after the eclipse. Now we got Mercury retrograde again. So we got to wait until April 24th, you guys, until we can finally start building up again, I guess. So a couple more weeks to go, huh? Gee, it never ends. <laughs> it never ends. Never ends. Um, Alyssa says, uh, eclipses have been a time of reflecting and resting for centuries. Kimberly says, same, lots of sleep like I am resetting, right? Afka Art says, my dog was really upset that I was absorbed by the eclipse and not giving him all my attention. Oh, no, poor doggy. Daria says, love the sweater. Great color for you, Jacob. Thank you so much. Thank you. Nancy says, Monday. So wait, Daisy Dior. My mom broke her el elbow. Wait, hold on. It's going fast. Let me go up again. Sorry. My mom broke her elbow the day of the eclipse. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry, Daisy. Wishing your mom a super speedy recovery. Oof, elbow, that hurts, you guys. Nancy says, Monday I was in bed, felt like I was mourning. T tonight I'm rearranging the living room furniture. It's insane, you guys. So we've all been through it, huh? My sister and mom were super sick and today now they were fine. Louie, really? Side guy says, well, I got to say that after the eclipse, I had a phone call with my crush. So I was over the moon. OK, well, good. So you got some, something good came out of it. Teresa says, I got a corneal abrasion from something flying into my eye that day and had to run 
to the ER in the middle of the eclipse, but managed to get a couple amazing pictures of it. I know, Terry, you posted to Instagram. That's insane. Sorry, I'm, I'm glad you're feeling better. Zara says, oh, no, I didn't get my notification today. Hi, Fashion Bunker. Hi, Zara. Kev says, Mercury is always in retrograde. I know. It's like it's not in retrograde less than it is in retrograde, I have the feeling. Like, what gives? Corey's like, 24th is my birthday. Right when retrograde ends, Corey is born. Fabulous. Cinnamon Roll says, I feel you. It's a couple Oh, Despino, my love. Thank you so much. Despino Lyco Mitru donated $53.73. The tip of shame. Shame. No, we have no shame. That's the whole point. No shame. Tip your host if you like the entertainment, despite my cold and stuffy nose. Thank you, Despina. I'm going to blow the confetti just for you, darling. Thank you. Thank you. Very generous. Thank you, sweetie. I hope you're wearing your necklace as well. We're twinning today. <laughs> I woke up with a red eye too, says Oshidi. What is going on with us? Why are we all such a mess, you guys? When are we going to be okay again? <laughs> Yonina says, I'm going back to bed, but so happy to catch a live. We'll watch later. Take good care of yourself, Jacob, dear. Take care, everyone. Uh, love you guys. Love you too. Thank you so much. Nancy, thank you, my Man's love. donated $20. Shame. Shame. And confetti blow. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Nancy. Very generous. Thank you, sweetie. Teresa says, and the ER was packed that day. It's like everyone was either hurt or sick during the eclipse. Wow. Oshidi says, but I always sleep with makeup. I zone wash. Oh, Oshidi. You know, they say, wait, Zara Justina, did I say hi to you? Hi, Zara Justina. Sorry if I say, if I didn't say it. Sometimes I think I say something, but I don't because the chats are, hi, sweetie. Welcome, welcome to the chats. Um, you know what they say? They say, be sure to always take your makeup off before you go to sleep. This, these are folk tales, but they say that your soul exits the body when you're sleeping and it travels and that's why you dream. But then when you wake up in the morning, the soul has to come back to the body. But if you have makeup on, the soul might not recognize you. So there might be some mistake happening. So always be sure to wash your face, take the makeup off before you go to sleep. <laughs> Allegedly. That's what they say. That's what they say. Oh my God, I lost my voice yesterday. Still recovering. Wow, Zara. Cha, we're going through it, girl. Antonio, how's it going, sweetie? Hello from the Bronx. Hey, Antonio. How's it going, sweetie? Corey says, I'm not being a party pooper, but I'm dying to know about Chanel and Louis Vuitton being bitchy to each other. Oh, we're going to do that. Oh, she says, I love the movie Insidious. Oh, that was a fun one to watch. Tipa says, yes, Jacob. Kate says, OMG. Katie says, hello, everyone. Hi, Jacob. Just woke up, but have to go to work. We'll rewatch later. Just want to say hi and have a beautiful day, everyone. Have a beautiful day, Kate. Have a great day at work, sweetie. Thank you for popping by. Oh, my, says Barbara. A traveler, OCD. Uh-huh. Yeah. Cinnamon Roll says, and your skin will look like S-H-I-T after a while. I mean, if you keep the makeup on, you're going to clog your pores maybe a little bit. Grant says, I picked up comment in my appointment, but happened to stop by another beauty boutique today and they offered to show me it, but said it's not available for sale until May 1st. Yeah, it all depends on the boutique you find and how much the sales associate is willing to bend the rules a little bit for you, you know. Classic Chanel playing their games. Thumb up the live stream. Thank you, Audrey. Thumb up the live stream, you guys. Kev says, lesson learned. Always wear natural makeup, but I wonder if the soul would recognize you after plastic surgeries. To the face. I am confusion. I mean, I, I'm dying to say something about this, but I'm not going to. <laughs> I'm just going to let it, let it linger. Let it, let it linger. Uh, let it linger. Antonio says, Jacob, did you hear about the coming Louis Vuitton from Murakami collaboration coming soon later within the year? No. Is this for real? Antonia, I've been hearing rumors since two years now, since before the second 
collaboration with Yayoi Kuzama was about to come out. People were saying that uh, LV was working on a second collaboration with Murakami. And I was almost expecting it to come out right after Yayoi Kuzama. Like, I felt like they're going to release Yayoi Kuzama first because Yayoi Kuzama doesn't sell as much as Takashi. So they wanted to be sure to sell Yayoi first. But then Murakami never happened after Yayoi Kuzama, so... I'm super excited. I've I've been hearing rumors since, yeah, since a long time now. You know. Tipa says, it's not the soul that matters, it's the ancestors. Oh, that's a good point. Tipa says, uh, sorry, Flo Casa says, OMG, new Murakami, they might get me with that collab. They might get me too. Angela says, yes, it's real. The Murakami collaboration is coming. Oshidi says, ghosts are known to look weird sometimes. It's It's because it's, it's because it's, how they saw themselves when they were alive. Oh, I see. Antonio says, if this is true, my heart is going to melt. Is this confirmed? Audrey's like, oh, that's amazing news if it's true. Well, they did the denim first, Cinnamon Roll says. Krabi Bizak says, I would take Murakami over the polka dots, lol. Me too. Wait, so, no, please. I, You guys, just please don't tell me it's happening this year. Because Antonio, you, says it's hap you said it's happening this year. You guys, I need, I know, we need this to happen next year because, and let me tell you why. Because I want these luxury brands to suffer a little bit more with nobody buying so that they reconsider their pricing strategy so that by the time next year they release Murakami, it's going to be a little bit less expensive than if they were to release it now. Because if we keep not buying LV, then the Murakami collection is not going to be as expensive. If they release the Murakami collection now, I fear it will be more expensive than if they were to release it next year. So I'm, you know what I'm, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, oh, I don't know, you guys. I think it's going to be expensive no matter what they do. <laughs> like, if they release it next year, it's still good. Because they know, like, everybody loves Takashi Murakami. And I, I'm not going to be able to resist. I am not going to be able to resist the Murakami collaboration. I know. I'm telling you. And I'm telling you right now. <laughs> That collaboration over there <coughs> is not real. No, it's real, but uh This is like butter. I know, Varel. Miss Jelly says there's a collaboration with Mark Jacobs and Murakami. Oh my god. Miss Jelly, I the I know, the one from 2005. Duh, I have it. <laughs> what do you mean? They're like Miss Jelly's like, did you guys know 2005? Like, yeah, we're all like living for that. That's like that is like the collection. Oh, the cherries, the eyes, the onion head, the panda. Ah! Frozen Luxury says, I feel some type of way about the new Pharrell Hawaiian-ish collection. Meh. <laughs> Not really. Same Jacob says, Kate, right? Better if they release it next year. And Nancy says, also maybe better quality if they release it next year. Johnny says, good point. Oh no, Louise, like I just bought a car. So don't do it. Don't release it this year. Oh no. What do you mean, Miss Jelly? Mark Jacobs is collaborating with Louis? Mark Jacobs. Is Pharrell doing him a favor back because like he called Pharrell into Louis? back in the 2000s, and now Pharrell is like, hey, girl, you're in trouble. Your brand isn't doing that well. Want to do something with Louis? Come back to us. I'll make a collab happen. Miss Jelly's like, no, it's a new collab, not the 2000s collab. Yes, wow. Hmm. Oh, damn it. Yeah, no, the Murakami collab. Mm -mm. Oh, Frozen Luxury says, Miss Jelly, it might be the Mark Jacobs for Takashi collaboration for the Mark Jacobs brand. 
Ooh. Yeah, but I, I still prefer Murakami for Louis. Am I that biased? I think I am. Manti says Murakami knows how to get us that B. I know, Manti. Oof. Listen. Ugh. Because his stuff is so cute. Like in a good way cute, you know? Like in a really good way cute. Ugh. Yeah, I, I will not. I'm telling you right now. I'm not going to be able to say no. At least a couple of pieces I'm going to have to hunt down. Like, obviously, can't afford the whole collection, duh. But, you know, like, mmm. Mmm. I know, Kate, right? Kid Maddox is like, Mark Jacobs? For Mark Jacobs? By Mark? By Mark Jacobs? <laughs> I still have my black multicolor speedy. Love it still. Ah. Oh. What a beauty. Frozen Luxury says, you know it's going to be Takashi Ballet Flats uh, for Marc Jacobs. Yeah. The slipolets, just like he did. Uh, he keeps wearing those god-awful Balenciaga ballerina slippers, Marc Jacobs. I'm like, you've been corrupted. <laughs> oh, Louis. A speedy calls my name, too. If Murakami... But not leather. I, I don't want a leather Speedy. I want... I want the Speedy to be... I, I want the Speedy to be <clears throat> a canvas. And I'm sure if they do a, a Takashi Murakami collaboration, you guys, it's not going to be the same stuff like last time. I think they're going to want to keep that covetable and collectible. Like, I, I'm sure they're going to add some new stuff. Uh... Saya, do you have any intel from Foxy LV about the Murakami collection? Oh, no, wait. You, no, you wrote in a chat a couple of weeks ago that you haven't been in touch with her in a while now, right? So I don't know if you guys are still in touch. Any gossip we should know about? Oh, the account is still taken down. Cha. Hold on a minute. I just have to refresh my lips before we do the topic. Uh, it's going to be very expensive. Very exclusive. We'll see. No, I don't think so. I think they got quite stung by the fact that they invested millions, if not billions, for the Yayoi Kuzama collection that did not do so well. So, I think the Murakami is... They're not going to play that game. They want to sell. Oh, Andy says she was not doing well. She was very ill. Sai says, no, 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 we're still besties. Okay, good to hear. Uh, good to hear, you guys. Hmm. <clears throat> TPAL, that's a good point. LVMH has plenty of write-offs with all the corporations they're running. Yeah. Antonio told me earlier, uh, Antonio says, my sales associate told me earlier this year that uh, uh, Takashi Murakami is going to come. Despina is like, I don't care if it's going to be leather or canvas, I'm dying ferret. Uh, Miss Jelly's like, well, I guess I won't be getting my braces. Like, if I have to choose between my health and Takashi Murakami for LV, I choose Takashi Murakami for LV. <laughs> the desperation is real, you guys. Like, we are such fashion hoes. Oh, my God. And you know we're all gonna... You know we're all gonna buy that shit. I know, Alyssa, me too. I'm going to need me a little piece or two. Oh, my God. Uh. And then Chanel is bringing out more stuff. It's going to be costly and it's going to be amazing. So there's that to have to spend money on as well. And then their new color codes mirrors are going to come out. Allegedly. 
as well. Hi, Sobi. I found a jersey flap. Might spend spend more Murakami cash on that. Oh, she, do you see that? Yeah. <clears throat> oh my gosh, so much. Guys, any tip on the best card holder one can buy? Any brand suggestion? Is Louis Vuitton worth buying? If you I, yeah, I would prefer Louis card holders over other brands. If you want a luxury card holder, it's something in canvas uh, with, you know, lined in leather somehow. But then to each their own, I don't know. That was a joke. Hope I never hear of that woman again. Wait, MMM, who are you talking about? Let me scroll up a little. They need to attract the aspirational customers. Wait, MMM says that was a joke. Hope I never hear of that woman again. Who? So I have to go higher then maybe. Special Sasha, how's it going? How's it going, sweetie? I'm um, trying to find out what MMM means. Flo Caso, hi, sweetie. Apparently as a teaser for 40 years of Mark Jacobs. Oh, Flo Caso, how's it going? Uh, it's on Mark Jacobs' website, apparently as a teaser for 40 Years of Mark Jacobs, a collaboration with Takashi Murakami. Interesting. The Pumpkin Lady. Oh, the Pumpkin Lady. Yayoi Kuzama. Yayoi Kuzama. No, no, Yayoi Kuzama is not doing it again. It's going to be Takashi Murakami. Scorpion Doll says, I got my braces done at an ortho school so I could afford more Louis. Oh, my gosh, you guys. We are on another level. Oshidi gave uh, their sister, the Priscilla Murakami, so happy she still wears the bag. Hi, Xavier. How's it going? Evian says, I was browsing through a website selling Chanel mirrors for $60. Overpriced. The color codes mirrors, well, they're supposed to... How much did they cost when they came out? $45? I think they were like $45 or $50 when they came out. So they're limited edition. $60 does cost more than what they cost originally, but it's not $100. So for something that's a limited edition and no longer available, <clears throat> if they come with their original box and pouch and you really love the color, oh, just the black one? No, Evian, go to the Chanel website and buy it. The Chanel website sells that one. Yeah, no. Chanel still sells the black one, you guys. The black one is available on the Chanel website. Don't buy the black one from some crazy scalpers out there. Don't do that. You're going to waste money. Oh, MMM is like, no, no, I know. I was commenting to you saying that her collection with Louis didn't sell. Yeah, it didn't sell very well. Mm -mm. They tried to make it all this exclusive thing, but... Uh... Oh, Andy, really? eBay has some color code mirrors for 30 bucks. That's a good price. If they're authentic. Teresa says, who is the designer that did the catogram print for Louis Vuitton with cats on it? I love that print. I have no clue. I don't remember cats. Does anybody know? I don't remember cats, like cute cats? Or like scribbled on animals, because the scribbled on animals was from, uh, those were creepy. I didn't like that one with like really ugly animals. Uh, what are, like two brothers or something uh, that did the, the ugly animals. Grace Coddington, says Kev. Well, there you go, Terry. You see, ask the fashion bunker and you shall receive an answer. Grace Coddington apparently did the cat-o-gram. Uh, Miss Jelly says, that was a cute print, Teresa. It had a mouse inside of it. What's the name of the ugly animal scribbled up at? Like, the, they had a really ugly-looking elephant, a uh, hippopotamus, like, like uh, scribbled in, like, black charcoal or pencil. Uh... What was the artist's name? Yeah, the rhinoceros, Joyful Remorse. There was a rhinoceros. I thought it was really ugly. <laughs> I can't remember the name of the artist or artists. I think it was two. The new Traveline. Oshidi, you mean the Chanel bags out of nylon? 
not a big fan of those. If you're talking about the Y2K versions, um, yeah, Y2K era. Cinnamon Roll says, yeah, those animals were disturbing and ugly. <coughs> Pardon me. Yes, I've been trying to find a speedy in the print, but sellers are charging like three thousand five hundred to four thousand dollars used. That's that's a lot. That's a lot. Oh, E Harper, thank you for becoming a patron, sweetie. So anyway, um, let's talk about this uh, topic that we have to talk about. Alyssa says, ugly, must be trashed by Pharrell. I'm joking. I remember the atrocity, but don't recall the artiste. I also don't remember the artiste. Andy says, I have the old nylon and it still holds its shape. Chapman Brothers. Thank you, Tanya. Love to shop. Thank you, Tanya. Yes. The Chapman Brothers Collection. Thank you, Aliyah Mac. Yeah, the Chapman Brothers Collection. I found it really creepy. Stuff that comes out of nightmares, but not in a good way. Um, uh, thanks, Louis. I'll check out the link in a, in a little bit. Oh, Shitty says, how about a timeless clutch? Huh, sorry, I saw all these in a store. I have a timeless clutch. You know, I love it. The timeless classic clutch, I have one. Love it. In caviar leather. Kev, you like those fantasy animals. Why does that not surprise me? Uh, Nancy is asking, what do I think about the Gris Dior perfume? I have the original, uh, which was uh, Avenue Mon Montaigne. That's how they called the perfume before the city of Paris told them you can't call it that way. Uh, and I love it. Uh, they then slowly reformulated it a little bit. Um, still, still a very lovely perfume. Uh, solid, solid release from the Collection Privée. All right, let's do the topic. Now, what will go will go. Uh, let me just, uh, so we're going to do Chanel and Louis battling it out. <clears throat> ah, I see. Okay. <coughs> Cha. What a doozy. Mm. All right, let's do this. I have, my hair gets tangled up in like a nanosecond. Like you move it twice and it's, it's all tangled up. What gives? Doesn't. Long hair is really high maintenance, you guys. It's like, it's a lot. Especially when you're like, you're annoyed, you're sick, and you just, you just, ugh, you don't want to think about stuff like that. And then you're turning around in, 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 in <coughs> you're turning around in your bed and then you pull your own hair from the back because it's that long. And then you wake yourself up because you tugged your own hair. Okay. Hi, everybody. Jacob here. Welcome back to the Fashion Bunker. Chanel and LVMH are at it again. Chanel, privately owned, family owned business. Louis Vuitton owned by LVMH, which is publicly available. You know, if you are a shareholder or a stock owner of LVMH, Maybe you're luckier than the rest of us who just own the little trinkets, bags and stuff, right? But so we got LVMH allegedly battling it out with Chanel in no other place than New York City for a little bit more prestige. And, we, and just when we thought, <clears throat> oh, you know, the end of luxury, right? The brands are starting to sell less and less and less. The shops are not as full as they used to be. All of a sudden, they're battling to purchase stuff. They got the money. They're liquid. 
What is happening? Oh my God, so much to talk about. First, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Push the join button next to the subscription button. Become a member today. Gain access to extra perks. You can also join me on Patreon. Super Deco all spelled together there as well for extra perks. Thank you to my members and patrons who already pledged. This video is being filmed live in front of a live virtual audience. I live stream several times a week, so come join the fun, come join the chats. A thumb up this video for enjoying it, and everything I say in this video is for entertainment purposes only, not rooted in truths or facts. Everything's alleged and just my opinion. So, also my apologies, I'm recovering from the cold, so if I cough, alas, it is what it is, you guys. I got the sniffles. Business of Fashion is reporting that Chanel Limited is in talks to purchase a building in Manhattan's Fifth Avenue, joining the competition among the world's top retailers to snap up spots on New York's iconic luxury shopping corridor, they're fighting with the competition, which is LVMH, which has also been in talks to acquire the building at the corner of 58th Street. The Intel said, uh, <clears throat> that they do not wish to be named because they're citing private information. Business of Fashion then allegedly went to Chanel asking for comment, and Chanel spokespeople refused. They declined to comment. Business of Fashion then allegedly went to LVMH asking for comment. LVMH spokespeople declined to comment. Then Business of Fashion allegedly went to the current owner of said building and owner of or management of said building declined to comment. So this is what I'm thinking. When every party declines to comment, you know they're in the middle of a bidding war and they do not want any information to leak so that the other opponent might have some intel and might win the bid. But the interesting news is that, you know, in the past, a lot of these brands would rent. Now, since a few years now, the tides have turned and a lot of these luxury brands, instead of renting, have found out, have discovered for themselves that it's worth it more to purchase, to straight out purchase land or to purchase, to purchase real estate in these parts of the town where they feel luxury is there to stay for good. Interesting tendency, because obviously you do spend many, many millions of dollars per, or billions. Well, let's see how much it costs. I do have some numbers here to share with you. Um, but uh, interesting how they think that this is a better investment than to rent. Also, because if they purchase the building and that real estate, they get to keep changing interior decoration according to whatever the mood and the style is without thinking about having to, I don't know, <clears throat> without thinking about their, pardon me, contracts, uh, the lease is expiring and them deciding to move to another building, which also costs a lot of money. I think it's more economic to actually purchase a building and just stay with it. I know that Vivian Westwood's, uh, when she was still alive, uh, Carlo Bruni, who is uh, like owns half of the company, Vivian Westwood, he would straight out purchase shops. So the Los Angeles boutique belongs to Vivian Westwood. It's not rented. It's theirs. Um, New York boutique, I think, as well. Like he, way before this was a trend way before this was a trend, the Westwood company was purchasing real estate. They were not renting to open up boutiques. Very fascinating. Now Chanel and LVMH are battling it for Fifth Avenue. And uh, so global luxury retailers have been competing to own buildings on Manhattan's Fifth Avenue in recent months. Gucci owner Caring said it purchased 715 to 717 Fifth Avenue for 963 million US dollars earlier this year. Let that sink in. They almost spent a billion in real estate. 
<clears throat> Entities tied to Prada, SPA, were behind the $835 million purchase of two buildings nearby, Bloomberg News reported last year. They're also saying that the Swiss watchmaker Rolex is constructing a headquarters building at 665th Fifth Avenue. Last year, LVMH opened its renovated Tiffany & Co. store at the corner of 57th Street. Luxury retailers are also hunting for property globally. Last week, Caring said it's spending 1.3 billion U.S. dollars. Oh, sorry, <laughs> no, 1.3 billion euro, which is 1.4 billion U.S. dollars for one Milan, Italy property. The Gucci and Balenciaga owner has also snapped up buildings in Tokyo and Paris. You see, there's a tendency here. I wonder if there's a crash coming really, really soon, because if they're buying up these properties... It's almost like something to dampen the blow when the sales are not there anymore. And you're like thinking, let me, let me at least do this and so I can save up some money later on down the line. But also at the same time, I'm thinking to myself, is this some form of let's spend a ton of this money because at the moment our sales are down and by spending all of this money as a company in real estate, we can have humongous tax deductibles. So if their sales are down by so much this year in the first quarter or in the last quarter of last year, then to purchase something for almost $1 billion this year is a huge tax deductible and can maybe, just maybe, and I am no financial advisor here, so everything I say is just my opinion and not professional at all. Maybe, just maybe, they can make their <clears throat> business look more profitable to their shareholders at the end of the year because of the ginormous tax cuts that they might get for having purchased said real estate. It's like almost like, okay, we're looking for ways to make money uh, shops are, you know, our merch is not moving as fast as it used to. So let's do this. This is kind of like plan B, you know, or let's let off more people. Let's fire some people. So we have to pay less salaries, but then also let's buy properties. You know what I mean? Deborah C says if they can in the chats, if they can buy the properties outright and avoid interest rates, then they have depreciation deductions. But you need the revenue to begin with. Deductions don't equal revenue. Deductions don't equal revenue, but it's something you spend for your business. You're expanding your business. It's a business expense. You're not buying a private house for yourself to for the CEO to chill in and call some hookahs on the weekend, but uh, you're buying this building to open a boutique, to open headquarters, so it's a business expense. Um, but furthermore, what I find very fascinating is how uh, the luxury property in New York City in particular, right, Fifth Avenue, right around the 500th Street, is so hot. It's like a hot potato right now, <laughs> right, bouncing, right. LVMH is battling Chanel to try to get it. Could you imagine Chanel and L? I wonder if LVMH is trying to do to pull some sneaky move. You know how Bernard Arnault, the owner of LVMH, is said to be very sneaky when it comes to business. Do you guys remember several years ago when he almost managed to take over Hermès, and then the family that co-owns Hermès they united together and they managed to somehow miraculously block him from taking over Hermès. He did back in the day a sneaky move like that. I, w I wonder if this is some weird sneaky move against Chanel. Battling this real estate, trying to get this building out from underneath their feet and then making them up the price more and more and more. And then right before he makes Chanel think that he's going to outbid them even more. 
but he pushed up the price really, really high. Then it turns out he's going to pull out. He's not going to want to bid more than them. And then they're going to be stuck having to purchase the building for several billions. And then they're going to go, uh oh, shit, what do we what do we do now? What do we do now? And then he's going to be like, go public. Let me buy the stock. I don't know. I'm just like envisioning a nightmare scenario here for Chanel. Obviously, this is just speculation, not rooted in any truths or facts. But interesting. Very, very interesting what's going on. And these are higher politics and these are higher instances with these, you know, the Birkin brand, <laughs> the Chanel bag, Timeless Classic 5 brand. They are on a whole other level. When billions are at stake, they're playing with different cards, different set of rules. Their investments work in a different way. They got a ton of lawyers, a ton of... Uh, people who are specialized in all of this money investment, like who knows what their strategy is. It's like a chess game, you guys. They're like thinking 20 steps ahead already. While we're still stuck here thinking whether or not we'll be able to afford a freaking card holder as an aspirational customer the next year. See how sad this is? This is so sad. It's so sad. The situation has come to this. We're contemplating whether or not we're going to be able to afford a new card holder as the aspirational customer, while they are contemplating billion here, billion there. And until next time, never give up on aspirational love, my dears. Let me know your thoughts down below. Take care. Bye. First the building, then the whole company. And then assign Maria Grazia Curie as the creative director for Chanel. Deborah C. says, oh, wow, risky, nefarious... Con uh, Oh, I don't even know that word. On the bidding. <coughs> Flo Casa says, like a hostile takeover type situation. Yes. So Flo Casa, that's what Hermes try um that's what El that's what Bernard Arnault tried to do with Hermes several years ago, and it did not end well for him, and he doesn't like to talk about it at all anymore. You know. He doesn't like to talk about it. When in interviews they ask him about it, he's like, mm-mm. He's like, mm -mm, mm -mm. not gonna do, not gonna do, not gonna do. Deborah says, oh, wow, sorry, I don't know, contra, contra temps, contra temps. Carolina C. Thank you for becoming a tier one member, sweetie. Hi, Ariana Vitali. These luxury companies really get into drama. Oh, don't they, don't they, oh, don't they, all the time, all the time, all the time. Yes, refund is an attraction, but LT, they need an angle. Mm. <clears throat> Oshidi says, yes, I remember that takeover. I dropped my macaroon, baby. I dropped my macaroon. Thumb up the live stream as we move and fluctuate towards uh, these uh, very dangerous territories. <laughs> of Birkins, Neverfulls, and what have you. In fact, uh, the next topic I want to talk about is uh, just that, all of these baglets. <clears throat> well, hold on. Not just yet, because Bubbles is doing me a ditty. Something is... Uh, Slowing down here. Sorry, guys. We got technical difficult technical difficulties. All right. So, um, Carolina C has become a member. Thank you again. Thank you. Now it popped up. It took a little while, but we we got there, Carolina, with uh, bubbles notification. So, uh, next topic: Louis Vuitton totes and Dior micro bags can save luxury. Really? What will go, will go. What will go, will go. <clears throat> Hi, everybody. Jacob here. Welcome back to the Fashion Bunker. Ah, the end of luxury, the ongoing saga. Well, apparently luxury brands have finally woken up and realized, hey, hold on a minute. The aspirational customer 
is necessary after all for our business. So how do we now get the aspirational customer back if all of our big products like bags have gone up in price so much? We've pushed the price so high up, we have lost the aspirational customer. So what are we going to do now? Well, let's start making teeny tiny bags, small bags, so small, you can't put anything in them except broken dreams. Also, let's try to work out a way to make even lower quality small leather goods and under SLGs fall also products that are technically not made in leather and get the aspirational client to buy those as well. And if that's not enough, let's get even more desperate for money. How about we create luxury, hear me out here, luxury chocolate for the aspirational customer. So now just a regular milk chocolate bear that costs you $1.50. Let's charge you 20 bucks for the aspirational idiot customer who's going to want to own a piece of, let's say, Louis Vuitton embossed on a chocolate bar. Yes, Louis Vuitton is selling chocolate bars for now in their flagship store in Paris, and their Louis Vuitton chocolate bar has also been cited in Singapore as well. Ha! Ah. But interesting how the aspirational customer has become, has become a very important topic, even for, for Bloomberg, because Bloomberg is reporting about this particular situation. Can you believe it? None other, none less than Bloomberg saying Louis Vuitton totes and your micro bags can save luxury. Now, this title alone, this title alone, and this is a brand new article that just came out, you guys. This title alone tells me that we have been on the right track since years now on my channel predicting the end of luxury. If, if major fashion outlets, magazines are reporting about this, stating how can we save luxury, then you know the jig is up. You know the ship is sinking. If even Bloomberg says maybe the tiny baglets can save luxury. So very fascinating. And the lady that wrote the article, her name is Andrea Felstead. Hi, Andy. She says that in 2007, Louis Vuitton introduced a new spacious bag, and she's talking about the Neverfull. And she says that the Neverfull, in, back in 2007, used to cost between $600 and $800. Now the price went up to, you know, $2,000. But uh, she said, you know, back then, you know, still expensive, but a never full for six to seven hundred dollars, you can save up and buy it, but none of that is available anymore. You know, the prices have gone up exorbitantly. The Chanel Timeless Classic used to cost, well, depend which decade we're looking at it. It's been around for a long time. The 255 has been around since the 50s. The Double C Turnlock Timeless Classic has been around since 1983 slash 1984. But it used to cost, you know, $1,000, $1,500. Now it's over $10,000, $12,000. That's not a price tag for the aspirational customer. Costume jewelry has gone up in price as well at Chanel. Costume jewelry is no longer really a price tag for the aspirational customer. I mean, you used to be able to get the Neverfull uh, Louis Vuitton bag, right, for 600 bucks. Now for 600 bucks, you get a teeny tiny brooch. Uh, at Chanel, for example. So this article is literally trying to analyze, and while it's trying to analyze, it showcases clearly to me the desperation of these brands. They're really trying to, like they're really trying to dig whatever they can at this point to find any way they can to earn some cash. But at the same time, they're staying very, very, very snotty about not wanting to budge on the reduction 
of the prices of their main ticket items. They still believe that the 1% of the rich are going to sustain those purchases. I personally don't believe that. I think that at a certain point, because the quality is also going down quite a bit, we've seen in recent years, everything I say in this video is for entertainment purposes only, not rooted in truths or facts. Everything's alleged in just my opinion. And it is my opinion that the quality has been going down in recent years. At a certain point, a person with a lot of money is not going to want to buy a bag that is really, really bad quality for ten to $15,000. The article does state, however, that Hermès is one of those rare brands that is still maintaining its pole position and is not losing money. Sales are not dropping. People are still considering Hermès to be worthy of the price tag. But then again, Hermès was not inflating their prices so crazily and greedily like other brands have been doing during the pandemic, such as Chanel. I mean, if you see the price like skyrocketing, that kind of curve of their prices as the years were passing up, going upwards, Hermès's prices are not uh, going up that vertiginously. I mean, Hermès prices are not like going up like that. You know what I mean? There's no vertical. They're not horizontal either, but they're between a horizontal and a vertical steady grow. While Chanel did a 90s, 2000s, 2010s, whoop, you know, it's like, it's insane. Very fascinating. So in the article, they, they touch base on, for example, the Neverfull being the aspirational bag, now no longer because it costs more. Um, and then they talk about Gucci, and they say Alessandro Michele did a great job, but now he's gone and Gucci isn't selling very much, but Gucci did a great job at having the aspirational customer get access to the brand because they would also offer back in the day when Alessandro Michele began, uh, that was around about eight years ago, uh, at Gucci as artistic director, like you could get a bag for a thousand dollars, uh, under a thousand pounds, they say in the article and a belt they say was also relatively affordable. Same with YSL. Same with YSL. You could get, I remember right as the pandemic began, you could still purchase really, really cool, the Lulu puffer bag in medium, which I almost got, but then it, it sold out in the color I wanted. So I ended up not getting it. And then the prices started going up. Like the Lulu puffer in medium leather lambskin was around about a thousand, six thousand seven hundred. That's a big bag, full-on leather, really gorgeous. Now it's like over two, what is it, almost $3,000. Um, and then they say, no, belts were affordable. Now even belts go, belts at Chanel are over $1,000 a belt. That's not an aspirational price. So you can't get an aspirational client to purchase a belt even. You know, then they say uh, Chinese middle class stopped buying now since the lockdowns. The stimulus checks in America stopped trickling through. And now what are they going to do? Um, and here is something fascinating. They say they're reducing the size of the bags. A lot of these brands are making the bags smaller and smaller. But I think to myself, how is an aspirational customer, what are you going to do with a teeny tiny bag? You can't even put a credit card in it. So the brands are realizing even that's not really a solution long term because you need a bigger bag for a person to actually live their life and carry the bag through the city and actually have the bag suit its purpose, which is to carry your essentials, at least a wallet, a phone, tissues and a lippy, at least. But some of these bags don't even fit that. So now the plot twist, and we've been talking about this since a long time. But first, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Push the join button next to the subscription button. Become a member today. Gain access to extra perks. You can also join me on Patreon. Super Dacob all spelled together there as well for extra perks. Thank you to my members and patrons who have already pledged. This video is being filmed live in front of a live virtual audience. I live stream several times a week, so come join the fun. Come join the chats and thumb up this video if you're enjoying it. Here's the plot twist, you guys. Bloomberg reports that these brands, now some of these luxury brands, but more and more are entering into the pre-loved market. That's the ultimate goal. We've been talking about this since years. Do you remember? Speculating 
why some of these brands are investing in the real real, Vestiaire Collective, Farfetch, Chanel invested in Farfetch. Here we get information um, about uh, somebody else investing in, pardon me, I'm still recovering from the cold, so my nose is like all sniffly. Um, somebody investing in, I have to just find it, <clears throat> in Vestiaire Collective, I think it was Caring. And Rolex, Rolex just started selling, just like Apple would sell you a refurbished Mac, a refurbished iPad. Rolex is selling you now certified pre-owned products on their own website. And they say, given that selling secondhand goods requires specialist skills and logistics, they could also partner with resale sites such as The Real Real, and here they say Caring, has gone a step further, investing in the rival platform, Vestiaire Collective. Isn't that fascinating? And we were asking ourselves years ago, way before the pandemic, why would Chanel be investing in Farfetch? Well, now you know. That's the future. Pre-loved. That's where they can play more with the prices. They can't really just tell you all of a sudden the 255 reissue and the Timeless Classic bag. Prices are going to go, are going to fluctuate like gold, you know, like, okay, well, this season we're not selling that well, so now you can get the Timeless Classic flap for $5,000. Next season, the bag is selling super well, so we're going to jump the price up to $10,000. They can't do that with their new product, but they can do that with the pre-loved products. There they can completely fluctuate as they wish, and it's not going to damage their image that much. So they can definitely say, okay, we need it. we're a little bit pressed for cash at the moment. Let's lower the prices of our pre-loved stock, you know, and then when times are not so tough, they up the prices of the pre-loved stock while all the new stock stays at the same price level. They don't mess with the price tag of the new stuff. Interesting. Alaya Max says, if you can't beat him, join him. You called it years ago, Jacob. Thank you, Alaya. You've been watching and listening. <laughs> Thank you. Isn't that interesting? Um, Bleb says, Rolex sells through an AD, not directly. However, the pre-owned watches also cost more than you. Well, Bloomberg says, and I quote, companies could even start offering secondhand pieces following Rolex SA's lead and certifying pre-owned products for sale on their own websites. So that's how I interpret this article, saying that they are selling it on their website. Um, <clears throat> and this is how the luxury brands, the article is speculating, are going to such an approach in terms of starting to sell pre-loved on your own website or in your own shops, can prevent customers unable to afford new products from uh, defecting to more affordable brands, such as Tapestry Inc.'s Coach, which has found success with its tabby bag. This also establishes relationships with aspiring luxury shoppers who may be interested and able to buy new items later on. So what they're saying here is that the major luxury brands, the major luxury players might want to occupy and find and isolate that aspirational customer by selling them more affordable second-hand products and locking them into their brand so that the little money that they have they're going to spend on the second-hand refurbished product that they're selling in the hopes that one day that same customer is going to have enough money to step it up a notch and start purchasing brand new items from the brand. It's diabolically genius if you think about it. And I think that a lot of these brands are turning into that. It's becoming more and more that. So we're going to be seeing these major luxury brands selling us pre-loved. It's happening. It's happening right before our eyes. Mark my words. We've been talking about this since years. So, yes, we have the smaller little baglets. They are cute, okay, as collectibles. But sooner or later, we're going to need the bigger bags again to actually carry stuff around. And the aspirational kind is going to end up buying it secondhand. And just like that, 
these luxury brands might just take over the entire pre-loved market. They already started aiming their shots at authenticators by stating nobody can authenticate our luxury brands but ourselves. The brand itself can tell you if a bag you send in is authentic or not. But they're telling you that no self-proclaimed authenticator actually has the legal right to tell you that the bag that they authenticated is 100% authentic. The authentication of a third party cannot be bulletproof unless that third party isn't the brand itself authenticating its own products. All the pieces of the puzzle are falling into place. You just got to follow the breadcrumbs. Hansel and Gretel, follow the breadcrumbs. Listen, Linda, we're on to something here. Let me know your thoughts and prayers down below. And until next time, thumb up the video and never give up on love. Love you loads. Bye. Flo Casso says, I would love to start a resale side hustle, but I'm terrified uh, because, yeah, they, they might come for you. If, if your business starts growing, you know, these brands are going to be like, well, hold on a minute. You're, you no, you're a threat to us. So they might come for you. NY says, uh, Nijane says, imagine the irony if the brand itself was caught selling fakes. Yeah. Kev says, this can also be dangerous because they can funnel covetable items to their own reselling channel at an inflated price. Of course, it's all going to be monopoly. Of course, you guys. It's all going to be manipulation, FOMO, uh, monopolization of everything. Gosh, I, I need a tea. Uh, many years ago, traveling in LAX, I saw a secondhand Louis Vuitton bag almost next to the boutique, and it was a good size boutique. Huh. Diabolical indeed, says Johnny. Yeah. Zara says, excellent topic, and it is definitely happening, taking over the pre-loved market. I'm telling you, Zara, it's happening. Because it's like, how else are they going to earn money? Think about it. They don't have any more options left. They've outpriced themselves with their, with their you know, big ticket items. They've outpriced themselves. So, but you got to keep making money. I know we made a topic talking about they started opening up spas, resorts, hotels, restaurants. You know what I mean? The, the Gucci restaurant, the Louis Vuitton restaurant, the Dior restaurant, the Chanel restaurant, the Louis Vuitton, uh, the Louis Vuitton uh, at, at Doha Airport, like a lounge restaurant that Louis Vuitton opened. But all of that stuff still doesn't warrant full potential earning like you would get if you were to keep selling product and you need to diversify the product, right? And I mean, selling chocolate bars with a Louis Vuitton logo on them can just go so far. It, <laughs> a Louis Vuitton chocolate bar is not going to save Louis Vuitton from the downfall. You know what I mean? Vicente says, so sad their, pr their pride will be their downfall. Master Singleton, the Bulgari Hotel in Tokyo. Hi, Master, by the way. Yeah, sweet dreams, Barbara. Ah, good morning, Cecilia. I love this. Somebody goes to sleep and somebody's waking up. Thank you for subscribing, Brandy. Goya reduced their pricing on one of their most popular bags. There you go. And we've seen some of these brands reduce the price uh, of their products. Burberry being one of them, Fendi being one of these brands that's reducing their prices. You know, I've noticed also Chanel. Although, I mean, they're being real stupid at the same time. They, they sneakily, what Chanel did this past season, the new seasonal bags that they released in the size of like, the rectangular mini, the square mini, in a seasonal variation, like tweed or not in leather, but fabric, lined in leather, but the exterior and fabric. They made them cost around about $400 to $500 less than last season's seasonal minis. And I thought to myself, isn't that interesting? But of course, it's not a price decrease. They're just making it sound like, well, this type of tweed costs us less to make.
you know, and you think, oh, okay. But then they release those bags at the lower price just to have a price increase several weeks later. Because Chanel just had a price increase in March. So I was like, why are they doing this? Like they released these bags a little bit cheaper than the bags were one season ago in different materials. But then they upped the price right away. It's, it's like, I, I really think they have no clue what they're doing anymore. I really think they have no clue anymore. I know, MMM, right? Louis Vuitton selling chocolate bars is giving poverty. <laughs> Armani and Versace hotels, v -Sense. Yes, and Versace also had those huge resorts in, in Australia, which I think they closed down now because it wasn't doing very well. Oh, Afke Art, good night, sweetie. I mean, who would have money to spend on luxuries anymore, says MJMJ, right? At this point, nobody. I mean, and also who would want to? <coughs> Pardon me, you guys. Uh, we are still here we're still those people. We're our generation. We're lost. We're far gone. We've already been indoctrinated by these brands. We love these brands for better or for worse. You know, I'm going to be a lover and a sucker of Chanel <laughs> till the end of my days uh, for better or for worse. But the new generation coming up now is not as dumb as I was when I was younger. So they're going to fall less for for these games. I think people are going to fall less for these games. And I think the biggest problem these major luxury brands have is that they are really struggling to find ways to capture the new young generations, to make the young generations become their regular clients. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Um, you know what I'm saying? Um, let me sniff. <sighs> let me sniff comment. <laughs> oh, hi, Jocelyn. There's too much inventory out there already. I mean, to a point, people will only buy so many pieces. Brands would want to create trade amongst those items already out there via resale to earn profit. It's going to be a mess. Just lean. It's going to be a mess. And the people like us who come from this generation where we were indoctrinated to buy new, to not trust pre-loved, we're going to be the suckers who are still going to keep buying the new stuff. But so it's for us, I think we're still going to be buying the new stuff, right? But for the other generation... For, for the young generation coming out now, it's a totally different story, totally different ballpark, totally different ballpark. You know, you know what I'm saying? It's a gonna, it's a, it's a whole, totally different approach to consumerism, you guys. We're entering a new era, a new dawn. I have a story for you, by the way. There's an awakening. Hold on, let me. Let me just let me just freshen up my little. Oh, it's it gets better and better with every spray. I I adore this, you guys. Okay. Still, not a blind purchase. Do not blind purchase it. This thing is nauseating. <laughs> now, hear me out. Okay, a friend of mine, very dear friend of mine, no names shall be mentioned, okay, uh, okay, how, where do we start? First, I have to tell you this. I have been told that we are entering a new dawn uh, this year, the beginning of the year, and like the planets have aligned in a certain way so that, for example, for the zodiac sign, the Cancerians, I'm a Cancerian, born in June. Um, 
some planet is finally exiting whatever weird orbit it was in. And it was in this weird orbit for, I don't know, seven years or something. And it was like a more trials and tribulations time for us. And now finally the cancers and other people as well are entering into this new dawn for us, which begins somewhere in April. Like becoming more spiritual, less materialistic, more contemplative of existence, pondering what is really important in life, all the good stuff. Okay, we'll go, we'll go. And Jolie, simple opinion, like, is it the dawning of the age of Aquarius? No, it's not the age of Aquarius. It's a different age. And, and so my dear friend, who's also a Cancerian, uh, she last year got on the wish list at Hermes for a Birkin. Okay. Now, the wish lists function differently in different countries, depending on which country you're in. In some countries, you can actually uh, write an email to Hermes, to the boutique, and ask if they do have a slot open for you to come and make a wish appointment for your wish bag. They then, uh, when you ask for this a wish appointment, they can only grant you the appointment if there is a slot available within one month of your request. And the slots fill up really quickly. So you got to be really fast and you got to keep sending emails because if you send one and they say, no, we're all booked out, wait a week or two, send another email. So basically last year, she sends them an email and first one says, no, she sends an email one week later and the second email goes through and they say, yes, we can grant you a wish appointment in three weeks from now or two weeks from now. They have that slot of one month. Whatever is available within that month, they can give you. If it's after the month, they cannot give it to you. It's only within one month. So she gets the wish appointment. She goes to the wish appointment. And that's where they show her the options. They're telling her like, okay, what would you like? You cannot buy a Birkin then and there. You can make a wish <laughs> for the type of Birkin or Kelly or Constance you want. So she says what she wanted more, you know, you can't really just say one. This is not uh, a private order. This is a wish appointment, which is different. So the parameters are quite limited. I mean, there's only several types of leathers. And if you tell them I, I, my wish is to have a red Birkin, mm, you will get a red Birkin within one year or one and a half years, but it's not going to be a red you can choose. It's going to be whatever red leather they have when they start making your Birkin. So if you say red, you might end up getting some shade of red that you really don't like. So the only colors that are set in stone during the wish appointment is black Gold, which for Hermes, gold is um, a brown, like a very honeyed brown, adorable color. So the only set in stone colors that you know you will get if you ask for is black, gold, and uh, etope. But you cannot choose just one color. You need to choose at least three. You can classify them and say, I want black first, gold second, etope third. But if you tell them, I want red, brown, and yellow, you might get some shade of red that you hate. You might get some shade of brown you hate or some shade of yellow that you hate. And then they give you two options for leather that are set in stone. They can for sure grant you your wish if you want Togo leather and if you want um, Epsom. That's it. Now, if you want any other leathers, 
Then you have to tick off a box that says, I'm open to surprises and I would like some other leather. She wanted box calf. Box calf, really hard to get. You can't just order it. So fast forward, are you still following me? Is this boring to you? Should we change topic? I see everybody silent in the chats. Should I continue with the story or should we change? Because everybody's silent. Like, did you all fall asleep? What was going on? Okay, no, everybody. Okay, everybody. Lives. Oh, okay, good. Okay, continue. All right, all right. <laughs> everybody's like, no, 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 no. Tell us the story. Tell us the story. Oh, okay. Over 30, over 300 people watching. Okay, okay, okay. Thumb up the live stream, you guys. Thumb up the live stream. So, fast forward. She made her wish appointment, she got her wish appointment in May, May of 2023. It's April now, 2024. So, not a full year has passed. 11 months have passed. She gets a phone call. She gets a phone call from Hermes. The sales associate tells her, I'm so happy to be able to tell you that uh, your wish order has arrived. We are so excited. <clears throat> uh, it's a Birkin 30. And, but the leather is not exactly, you see, here they begin. The leather is not exactly the leather that you ordered. It's not box calf. And the color is not... <laughs> and the color is not exactly what she ordered either. Um, you know, she would have loved a rouge arch, like a Hermes red. No. But since you have to give them three colors when you make your wish... She also told them black. So the bag is black or gray black. I don't know, some grayish, an anthracite, anthracite, something like that. And the leather is, and Kev is going to know, I think only Kev knows this leather, Maurice. So the sales associate is like, well, it's a rare leather. Maurice looks like Togo, but less grain, but it's not as shiny as box calf. So there, <coughs> and it's not red. It's like black. Exactly these sense. So not your, not your dream item. <laughs> MJ, MJ is like, why did the sales associate even call then? LOL. I know, right? Kev says, oh, Maurice is a beautiful leather. I like ma matte, mattified. Yes, it is a matte leather. Uh but nothing to do with box calf. So the bag is Maurice, 30, gold hardware. And they're like, so the bag is here. And here, and, and so my friend is also a cancer, right? And, and we're talking about this um, reawakening and uh, being more spiritual. So we had a phone call. Oh, we had, we did, we did. We we had a phone call. This was an emergency. <laughs> you can imagine, you can imagine this was an emergency. So her and I are on the phone and this, we're continents away. Okay. I don't know what the time zone difference was at this point. Like, uh, and uh, we're like emergency phone call. We got, you know, we got ring, 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 ring. You know, we did the whole, and she's like, Jacob, I don't know what to do. She's like, I've been feeling some type of way since some time now. I'm not feeling the FOMO anymore. And I said, interesting. And she says, I was almost kind of embarrassed to tell you because I, I thought if I tell you that I might not take the bag, you're going to tell me I'm crazy because if Hermes offers you a Birkin, of course you're going to take the Birkin, no matter what the Birkin is. 
And I was very, very proud of her. And I said, no, don't you ever be scared about telling me anything at all. And I'm really proud of you because you stick to your guns. Don't let them bully you into spending, you know, over $10,000 or euro uh, for a bag you don't really want. Just because it's a Birkin and you've been told by influencers all around you, if they offer you a Birkin, you buy it, buy it, buy it, no matter what. And then she told me something very interesting. She said, you know, if I really think about it, I am a Kelly girl. I always loved the Kelly. The Birkin, I fell into the Birkin thing because of the influencers telling me Birkin, 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 Birkin. But also, she said, it's... The FOMO is gone, you know? I, I, I don't feel this urge to buy it just because it's offered to me. But the fear is there that if you reject this bag, that then they won't give you another wish appointment for, let's say, a Kelly, if she wanted a Kelly one year from now. And I said, no, you know what? I'm... I said, I'm, I have nothing against you telling me you don't want the bag. Fine, then don't take the bag. But I said to her, at least, because all you have had till now was a phone call about the Birkin with the sales associate, at least go to Hermes to see the bag. That's what I told her. That was my tip. I said, okay, you don't have to buy the bag, but at least... Make an appointment with them. Tell them you're going to come in to Hermes to see the bag in, in person because you've... You, tell them. Don't be scared. Tell them you never saw Maurice Leather before in real life. You would really like to touch it and feel it. Uh, so make an appointment to go there to see the bag, to try it on, to see how you feel about it, about the color. Kev says, and I would have said, just get it, girl, and ship it to me. Uh, Kev... <laughs> Of course, <clears throat> uh, but then I thought to myself, what if this bag was offered to somebody else who said no? And so they went down the list of people who might fall similar into the criteria of that particular model, color, and leather. And so they offered it to her next. I wouldn't be so surprised if this was kind of like somebody else's somebody else's reject bag. But definitely, Grant says that's great. It's very silly for them to guilt so many clients. Honestly, though, I think this is a way to show Hermes how you want to be treated. Right, Grant? So I said, I'm really proud of you that you're going to stick to your guns. Don't buy it just because they're offering it to you. But I'm really curious to see... Who's going to end up with this bag if she says no? Um, also, something very interesting she said to me, and I agree with her completely, you guys. And now let me know in the comments, in the chats now, if you think the same thing. She said to me, Jacob, I was just re-watching quite a few videos on YouTube about people who have received the offer uh, <clears throat> they had their wish bag that they wanted and then Hermes calls them and offers them something. It's not quite what they wanted. And she says, have you noticed that a lot of these people unboxing these Birkin bags, there's always something in their voice, a disappointment. Like they come home and they bring the huge box and they say, I was finally called to a mess and the bag arrived. And, and most of them are going to say, it's not exactly the bag I wanted. Not the full specifications, but almost. And, I, and she says, there's way too many videos out there like that. There's not a lot of people who just had an unboxing video done where they say, where they tell you, this is exactly the bag I wanted. There's always some bitterness there. There's always like some, 
vibe that makes you feel like Hermès sold them the Birkin that they had. So they just keep the merch moving, but they don't really satisfy the customer. They don't really give you what you really, really want. And she said she noticed this happening quite a bit uh, in the unboxing videos that she saw. And so she said, I don't want to be a part of this. Yeah, it's lovely that they thought of me, you know, after 11 months, a bag arrived that kind of sort of fits to the specifications that I wanted, but not really. And then they called me to say, hey, if you want it, you can buy it. But she's like, what do I do now? And I said, and she's like, I don't want to play these stupid games. I have a life. I have a career. I have a child. I have sh shit to do in my life. I don't have time to play these games and say, yes, I'll buy it no matter what you offer me. I'll buy the Birkin even though she's never going to use it. And then secretly try to resell it, hoping that Hermes is not going to track that bag to her a customer profile and block her, like purse on fleek happen, <laughs> you know. I Mel, by the way. <clears throat> She's like, no. She's like, I don't want to play these games. I'm so done. And I'm like, you know what? Good for you. And this is so eye opening to me. Chica Boom says, whenever I see someone with a Birkin, I question their judgment and critical thinking skills. I mean, I don't judge people's critical thinking skills when I see them with a Birkin, uh, you know. A Birkin has beautiful uh, elements to it, so, you know. If they give me the call and I get the Birkin I want, I will buy it. But if they give me the call and they tell me, we got something not quite what you wanted, but almost, I'm going to be like, yeah, then no. I'm not going to give you, you know, $11,000 for something that's like almost there, but not quite. But Grace Chen says, good on her for the money that is being paid. Get what you really want. The Real Shaquin says, that's very true. That being said, I'm the type of client that needs to see a combo to like it or not. It's hard for me to visualize a combo and request it. It's not a combo, Jocelyn. This is a wish appointment. I don't know how it works in Canada, but this is not uh, the made-to-order appointment. That's a different type of appointment. If they allow you to assemble a Frankenstein bag that you want, that's different than the wish appointment. Okay, the wish appointment grants you basics and only one color. I mean, you can't say, I want the straps to be pink. I want the front of the bag to be purple. I want the back of the bag to be blue. No. During the wish appointment, it, very basic. Very basic menu. Very basic menu. Oh, hey, Zach. How's it going? So agreed. Just this week, I saw a couple of these videos. Good morning, Bunker. Hey, hey, Zachy. How's it going, my love? And so, so, the, so but I, I definitely told her, You've never seen Maurice Leather in real life. Go to the boutique. Try it on. You might like it. And if you don't like it when you're there, don't be afraid to say no. Don't be afraid to say no. You know, Cinnamon Roll says, no, but really, I'm not into Hermes, so maybe I can't understand, but I would... Be kind of made, like, why are they calling? Oh, yeah, and I get it, Cinnamon Roll. But that's okay. If you're not into the brand, that's totally fine. Totally fine. Uh, oh, there you go. Janie Ralston says, my toxic trait is that I would have bought it. But that, that's, that's the conversation that we had on the phone that I found very fascinating because we were really sitting there talking and thinking, like, wow. She's in this position now where, like, is she going to say no? Like, is she the first person to say no to Hermes? I mean, imagine Hermes calling you saying, okay, we don't have the Birkin you want, but we have a Birkin. You want to buy it? Every influencer I've seen on social media says, you do not say no to a Birkin. And I think that has to change. 
I think Hermès also has to learn that they can't get away with everything, first of all. Uh, but uh, do you remember, again, Tamara? Ugh. <laughs> she is such a pip. So do you remember when Tamara was like, oh, baby, like, I got uh, the Birkin, I bought the Birkin in the um, south of France. What She was like offered a crocodile brown or lizard something. And then she sat there and then she said in her video to her millions of, of followers, she's like, oh, but uh, you know, baby, you know, baby, what they say when, when, when Hermes offers you Birkin, you, you don't, you don't say no. Okay. So I bought it. Okay. <laughs> I'm like, okay, Tamara, good for you, sweetie darling. Love that for you. Uh, and this is, I think these influencers also need to readjust their priorities and not say stuff like this to their millions of viewers. It has to begin with us, people who talk to people. You know what I mean? I think we're the ones who have to start raising awareness and telling people, no. Just because Hermes is calling you and telling you, here, want a Birkin you never asked for, you don't have to buy it if you don't want it. But then you have these major influencers that have millions of followers, and they tell you in their videos, no, if they offer you a Birkin, you buy it. I don't agree with her. I don't. I, I, I don't. The Real Shaquin says the prices are so much higher now, nearly $19,000 Canadian with tax. So it's not to be taken lightly. MJMJ MJ says, Real uh, Hermes needs a reality check. <laughs> Kev says, LOL, not the accent. I and Ferret. Ah, the shades is chickaboom. Grace, well, you know, it, it's a roast meant with love. All done in love. Uh, I believe that if a customer says no first, it sends a message to MS that she is a serious client. Good things come to those who wait. Well, Grace, thank you for saying this. So this is another thing I told my friend. I said to her, go there, act stupid, act a little dumb. That's what I would, I, I'm, listen, we, we, you know we keep it very real in the fashion bunker. We keep it mighty real. This is how I would play the game, hand on heart. I would go there, I would be like super excited. Now, it's, a, it's not the bag I want, right? Still, I would be super excited, I would go to my appointment with them and be like, oh my gosh, you guys, thank you so much. This is so exciting for me. I never got a Birkin before, uh, and, but uh, it's not really to the specifications I wanted. So, but I'm I'm open to seeing it. I've never seen Maurice leather before. You know, I, I love your jewelry. I, I buy all your other things, your Frisbees, your crops, your horse riding gear. So they show me the bag and then I would be like, oh, it is beautiful, but it's not something that I would wear. But you guys, if I don't take this bag, is my wish order still open? Like, could you please, please, please maybe keep me in mind in case a box calf does show up? Because I want to have one Birkin. I don't want to have 50 of them. I love your brand. I love your clothes. I keep buying your other things. But I just want that one bag to be my bag for the rest of my life. It's very important to me. And I want it to be just perfect. I would say it like that to the sales associate and see how they react. And see if they would then say, we'll keep you in mind, you know, if a box calf comes in. Do you know what I mean? That's how I would play the I would I would be like super thankful, but also like play like, oh, I don't know what happens if I don't take the bag. Like, can you please explain it to me? Blah, 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 you know. Cecilia says, of course, you can say no. I've actually returned a few products to Hermes as I wasn't happy with the quality and had no problems at all with purchasing other products later. Right. But I'm talking about not accepting a Birkin and then ordering another Birkin after you've done an... Or, mm, let me rephrase. Not accepting the Birkin that they're offering you after you have waited for a year, after you have done your wish appointment. And then you say no. Will they ever give you another wish appointment? Because you have to request a wish appointment. Then they might see, what if they write down in your profile, you rejected 
the Birkin. And then according to that note in your profile, they might never grant you another wish appointment. I don't know. I'm just speculating here. I don't know. <clears throat> I don't know. Uh, Chickaboom says, how come we never have an ex Hermes sales associate spill the beans for us? Chickaboom, of course we do. We've done that on my channel several times. I have several videos talking uh, about this where I reference uh, intel from ex-employees. David says, all this trepidation in gaming sounds like a bummer. Doesn't feel very luxurious to me, but I would rather have a bespoke suit made or something truly one of a kind for that kind of money. Oshidi says, I hate barking so much. Oh, well then. <laughs> oh, Birkins, okay. Oh, she does not like Birkins. Nancy says, I'm very good at playing dumb. It comes naturally. <laughs> Me too, Nancy. <coughs> MXGX says, it's not fair their gatekeep fashion. Flo Caso says, to be honest, I think Birkins look like grandma bags. Please don't cancel me, LOL. I love grandmas. So I love the fact that they look like grandma bags. I think that's very endearing. Vicent says, meanwhile, Chanel's factory on Canal Street can't glue the logo on right. Grace Chen says, if we get there and we don't like the offer as a client, I would further impress upon Hermes that I will definitely buy the item that I want, not the one that is offered to me half-baked. Completely agree with you, Grace. I would phrase it a little bit softer, but that's what I would, that, that's the message I would convey as well. Rumzeya, how's it going, sweetie? I'm a regular Hermes customer, but haven't bought a bag in almost 10 years. I love the cashmere scarves, dishware, perfumes, shoes, ready to wear. My sales associate nearly begs me to buy a bag. It's kind of funny now. Interesting. Grace Chen says, since Hermes has such high ego, I would also rise to that ego level. Good point. Louis says, damn, these brands are so happy. Uh, we'd be having a heart attack for a bag. I know, right? Shani D says, hello, everyone. I'm late, but fashionably late, darlings. Hello, Shani D. How's it going, my love? Always fabulous to be fashionably late. Steph says, I wanted a Kelly years ago. Now that I'm older and have much more income, I lost interest because it's no longer aspirational for you, probably. Danitza says, I got offered a bag in Italy, a picotine cargo. We said no. I came back to the store a few days later and got another offer, a mini Ruli. And we said yes. Her name is Audrey. Oh, congratulations, Danitza. You see, you wait. And you, you wait until what you really like comes to you. Liz M says, I think something happens to your self-esteem when you accept to buy something you don't want. That's really good. Uh, that chat is really good. That really deep. Liz M, you nailed it with that one. It, yeah, it's like you get hurt in a way. It's like you damage your self-esteem by saying yes and, and, and you start feeling lesser than in a way. Andrea says, I don't mind being honest and walk out without that bag. Good for you, Andy. FN says, why they don't make it just in Rujaj's box if she wished so? If is a wish appointment, I don't get it. Um, okay, guys, let me explain. Um, there's a difference between the wish appointment and what Jocelyn was mentioning earlier, which is, uh, Jocelyn, what did you call it? Um, made to order? No, it was a different, uh, guys, help me out here. The other appointment that Hermes can give you, the, um, mm, uh, what's it called? I don't know that, uh, I, it's brain fart. The, um, Special order. Thank you, Jocelyn. Thank you, Cecilia Brown. Thank you, MJM. Thank you, Alaya. Thank you, Karina. Uh, oh, HSS, Hermes Special. Is this is the full name? Special order? Special order. Thank you, VC. Thank you, BF. Okay, so the special order wish appointment and special order appointment, two different worlds, two very different worlds. When they grant you a wish appointment, you have very limited parameters under which you can order. Two types of leathers only. Or you can say, I'm open to some surprise. And then they're going to call you when some leather comes that's similar to what you want. Special order. You get granted a special order if you're a particular client of Hermes, blah, blah, blah. One of the reasons why there's a lawsuit probably now happening in California with Hermes. Special order. Even with the special order, they can tell you, at the moment, you cannot order box calf. 
But with the special order, you might have more options open to you. But it also might take more time for them to manufacture your special order. In the special order, you can say, I want the straps to be one color, I want the front of the back to be another color, and so on and so forth. Wish order, you don't have those options. You cannot say, I want the straps one color, or handle another color. Wish order, very basic. It's the basic entry level Birkin or Kelly or Constance, okay. Which is totally fine by me because all I ever want is either black, gold, or a taupe anyway. Those are like my three colors. I do have my strict limitations. Uh, it has to be gold hardware for me. I do not want any other hardware but gold hardware on my first Birkin and only Birkin at this point. So, but uh, I don't care if they call me and tell me black, gold, or a taupe. I'll take either one of the three because I love all three. I really love all three colors. So I'm fine with that. Uh, I did tell them, I also had a, a wish appointment. Let's see what happens to mine. My wish appointment happened almost a year ago. My year is almost over, you guys. Let's see if I get a phone call. I'll keep you, I'll keep you posted. Uh, MXGX says, sometimes you get lucky, other times you get stuck with a weird bag. Exactly. <laughs> Or you say no to the weird bag. FN says, do you pay a deposit when it's a special order? No deposit, says Kev. No deposit. Also, no deposit for the wish. Liz M says, I saw a video that people are selling at a loss all the things they had to buy to get a Birkin or Kelly. They don't even care for most of the articles. They just want the bag. And that's America. Uh, and uh, we have this issue in America. And that's why the lawsuit is happening in America, because they're trying to do this whole shenanigan thing with like, OK, buy this in order to get offered a Birkin. But again, it has to remain proven if this is really the case or not. And we're waiting with bated breath to see how the lawsuit, if it goes to court, how the lawsuit turns out. But until then, Hermes is innocent until proven guilty, of course. Everybody's innocent until proven guilty. <laughs> Tipa says, fingers crossed it is before June so you can have your wish Birkin for your birthday. Oh, thank you, Tipa. And if I don't, I don't, you guys. It's fine. <laughs> but so fascinating that my friend told me, she's like, you know, Jacob, I feel like now I've been much more spiritual these past months. Like my whole life has turned around. I am prioritizing other things all of a sudden. I'm watching much less social media. I'm, I'm less, uh, I don't care about these things anymore. They don't give me the joy that they used to give me in the past. I'm much more dedicated to reading right now. She's uh, cooking a ton at the moment. She's loving experimenting with new recipes, spending time with her child, being in nature. You know, it's... Um, it's the, it's the dawn of this new era where a lot of people are way more awake. And I don't know, it's like we're waking up and realizing our priorities are elsewhere. Maybe it has to do with age as well. We're getting older. Maybe, maybe that's also helping us become a little bit more conscious of how we spend our money. But uh, it, it's, it, you know... And I was talking to, to my other friends uh, just yesterday. Um, we're talking about perfumes and, and perfume channels and luxury perfume channels. And I said how sometimes some of these perfume content creators throw shade at me because, you know, they say like, well, you know, it's not like uh, Jacob is reviewing all the new releases. He, he's very, very limited um, the amount of new perfumes that I review is very very small and I said well this has to do with the fact that uh, for me fragrances in particular are so emotional I'm never going to be able to be that 
perfume reviewer that sits in in front of the camera every day reviewing three perfumes a day new releases every day i cannot do that because and this has nothing to do with money if new perfumes let's hypothesize that every new release nowadays costs ten dollars instead of five hundred dollars okay I still would not be buying a lot of perfumes because it, it's not because of the money. It's because of the emotional involvement that I have with my fragrances. It's a relationship. I need a lot of time. I need to spend a lot of time with a new perfume. I need to get to know it, to understand what it has to tell me. I need to live with it for a while to let it unlock all of its mysteries and stories it has to tell me. Sometimes it takes years. It took me two years to prepare my review of Mahora by Guerlain. Two years. So, last year I only purchased one new perfume. Like as a new release. I, it's a different story. I purchase... I repurchase perfumes that I already have, that I love. I stock up on things I love. That's a different story. But in terms of purchasing a new perfume, last year I, I bought one new perfume, uh, the new release, which was uh, Shalimar Millezim Diris, which was launched October. And that's it. That's the one that spoke to me. And I was like, oh, that's the one. That's the one, you know. And then last year they released new look, like towards the end of the year, it was like a kind of a soft launch. I did not buy it. Then I bought it this year. Dior's new look and Chanel's Comet. Those are the two new launches that I bought this year. So it's four months now. We're four months into the new year and I have purchased two new releases while other perfume reviewers within the first four months of 2024 have already reviewed a hundred new releases. Well, I've reviewed two. <laughs> and I say this to you because I love these products. I love perfumes. I love bags. I love costume jewelry. You know, I love beautiful things. I love beautiful perfumes, but I also love to spend time with them. And if I buy too much and too quickly, then I don't have the time anymore to enjoy these pieces because they just keep piling up and the stuff that I just bought is already piled up by new stuff that I bought that's on top and I never get to enjoy anything. The only thing you end up enjoying is the endorphin kick you get from spending money, buying, buying, buying. Okay, So if your joy is to spend money, then by all means, keep spending it. My joy is not spending money. My joy is actually in owning these beautiful objects and using them, living with them, discovering them, enjoying them. You know what I mean? And so this is why I don't, you're not gonna see me review a ton of new perfumes every year. It's just not who I am, it's not in my nature. There you go. I might, you know, if a shop gives me a little sample you know, for the funds of it, you know, for, for the laughs, I could, you know, we could review a little sample. I've done it before with Louis Vuitton. I do it all the time. I never bought a Louis Vuitton perfume in my life, but I did a ton of reviews of Louis Vuitton perfumes because they kept, you know, throwing samples at me. But sample, sure, we could have a fun time, tongue in cheek, do a little review, tongue-in-cheek, but my serious reviews, my deeper reviews, are always for perfumes that I purchased. That I thought, okay, this is worthy of an entire bottle, to buy an entire bottle. Shani D says, I feel like one should be selective with fragrances. I only have two because that's all I have found that speaks to me. I don't like too many fragrances. Fragrance is such a personal thing. But Shani, the same for me applies to clothes, bags, jewelry. Everything, really. Really, you guys. Think about it. Everything. 
Resellers market less hassle, says MM. Brandy S says, enjoying your perspective and shopping stories. Thank you, Brandy. Thank you so much, sweetie. Ah, uh, MMM, very kind. Both are worthy uh, buys. Uh, new look is beautiful. Such a beautiful, beautiful incense. And uh, and Comet, I'm getting to know it more and more, but it, it's it's a wonderful fragrance. Less is more, says Linda Nolasco. And as Vivian Westwood would say, buy less, choose will make it last. T-Pal says they are not studying the parfums. They are selling clickbait. Good point, T-Pal. They're selling clickbait and spitting tonsil stones. Hmm. Zara Justina says, Jacob, this is wild. I'm starting a series about becoming a conscious consumer. Hold on, the chat just went up. Let me scroll down. I'm starting a series about being a conscious consumer after being indoctrinated as a child to collect things. Wild the similarities of the comments you're making. Oh, Zara, that is so amazing, you guys. Go check out Zara Justina's YouTube channel. Go subscribe to her. This sounds like an amazing new series she's starting to, uh, to work on. Hi, Mahora. Good morning, Dolly. Hey, Quing. Hi, Mahora. FN says, Happy Ramadan, Bayram, to all Muslims in the chat. I lost my aspiration during last month. It will come back, but right now can't be, won't be bothered. Well, happy, happy uh, Ramadan to all uh, our fellow uh, Muslim uh, bunkeries, fashion bunkeries and bunkerettes. Deeply Erring says, Hi, Jacob. Always love hearing your perspective. Sorry I haven't been around. Realized I had a real serious shopping addiction. Sending you in the bunker all my love. Deeply Erring, all of us, honey. We've all been there. We've all been there. Uh, we live in a highly, highly consumer-oriented society. A capitalist society is based on spending money. So you can imagine how brand marketing for many of these brands is all about finding our weaknesses in order to exploit them to get us to spend more money. So you can imagine how shopping addiction, uh, I, 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 you know what, I don't know why, um, uh, actually, it's a rhetorical question because I think I do know why, but uh, okay, let's just rephrase this. Have you asked yourself why the media, I'm not talking social media, I'm talking television, baby. Why are they almost never talking about shopping addiction? It's because they have sponsors that keep their shows running. They're not allowed to awaken the consumer and to tell the consumer where it's at because they have their sponsors who want you to keep spending money. Those sponsors keep paying to keep those shows running. So, of course, it's not in their interest to raise awareness about just how deeply rooted shopping addiction is in many countries, especially the capitalist countries. Alcoholism is a dangerous addiction. Drug abuse is a dangerous addiction. But we really do not put enough emphasis on and importance on how dangerous shopping addiction is as well. It can ruin relationships. It can send you into debt you will never climb out of, hence causing depressions, making you feel like a, <clears throat> a mountain is collapsing on your head and causing a lot of people to unalive themselves. Like, it's serious. It's a serious addiction. It's a dangerous disease. But the media doesn't raise awareness about it because it's not in the interest of their sponsors to raise awareness about it. Very sad. Very, very sad. MMM says, when I shop, I ask myself if the item I'm shopping for is what I really want or if it is what I'm influenced to want. Good point. Good point. Tipa says, I have the bell on Zara, uh, the, uh, the notification bell on, uh, but not getting notifications. Classic Tipa. It doesn't work for me either. Oh, Lisa is like Eid Mubarak. <laughs> Zara says, thanks, Tipa. Kev says, they want people to spend to keep the economy going. You're milking us for whatever we're worth. You're charging us sales tax 
for every product we purchase. You're charging us even tax on shipping. You're charging us a tax on income. In other words, you are charging us a tax when we spend money and you are charging us a tax when we earn money. So, I would say, why don't you, why, why wouldn't the government be forced to choose? Okay, you want a tax to keep society running? Choose one of the two, not both. So, to keep the economy running, there's other ways to keep economy running. Not just by milking the consumer and brainwashing them to become shopping addicts. Ramzia says, I heard that these influencers buy stuff, perfume bags, etc., to review them and then list them as business expense, get a tax write-off, and then buy the stuff they do want. Yes, Ramzia, of course, you can write you can write a lot off as a business expense, but it's usually not fully, you know. <clears throat> you still end up paying some taxes at the end of the year because you're earning money as well, but. Oh, Kimberly Kidman, good point. Brainwashing to cope through shopping as well. Good one. It's glamorized in a way, says Mahora. My shopping addiction has ruined my life. So true, says Flo Caso. Yeah, because it ruins your relationship. Your partner is really upset because you're like constantly in debt and, and they want to have a nice time with you and you prioritize other things rather than spending time with your loved ones. And it just becomes your life becomes in function of paying back credit cards. 30 years ago, uh, Nancy says, uh, AA member invited me to join his group knowing about my shopping. David Anderson says, it makes me want to read uh, Webel's theory of the leisure class. Vicent says, we don't own anything. We are told we own items, but we don't. We do not own anything. And once we kick the bucket, you can't take it with you anyway. Everything you have is on loan. And this is another one of the reasons why I love perfumes so much. They are such a vivid reminder of the fact that everything is volatile. It's not forever because the perfume, as you use it up, it empties. It becomes more and more empty until it's gone. Uh, so there's this beautiful poetry about how time limited it is. And it, a perfume always reminds me of how short time is. You know, when you spray the perfume on the skin, you bring it to life, it lives, and then it has its mid notes, base notes, bottom notes, and then it's gone. You, you smell it literally die on your skin slowly. Um, it's like wearing perfumes trains me to embrace the mortality of, of human life. Kev says, God knows where the tax money goes. Public infrastructure and safety is worse than ever. I completely agree with you, Kev. I am one of, maybe I'm just a conspiracy theorist, but for me, the amount of taxes we're paying and how little public infrastructure is being built up with that gives me the feeling that there is corruption in the air. Allegedly, of course, because what else are you going to say, but... Penny says, it is increasingly difficult for me to go out and spend 10K on a handbag when I see so many hardworking people struggle to meet even uh, uh, their basic needs. And the country is still in debt, MMM. The country, actually, the country leads by example. The country leads by example. Literally, the country is in debt. All first world countries, by the way, are in debt. All of them. All of them. America has a huge debt. All European countries have a... All first world countries have a huge debt. Okay, so you're sitting there as a consumer, citizen of one of these countries, thinking to yourself, well, my country is in debt, so I, I'm going to go in debt. Who cares? It's all a joke. We've invented money. We've, inv we've given power to a piece of paper. It's all... Very abstract, really. So who cares if I go in debt or not? Who cares? It doesn't exist anyway, right? It's very easy to fall into that trap, except the problem is, of course, your country is in debt and they can just decide to print more money and then inflation rate rises or they can just decide to not pay back their debt. But you, on the other hand, 
they will come after you if you don't pay back your debt. There's nobody to come after America for not paying their debt. They're a first world country. Who's going to come after them? <laughs> they got all the weapons. Who's going to come after America for being in debt? Nobody. But if you're in debt, America will come after you. <laughs> you know what I mean? So there is that problem. But they're leading by example because they're saying, well, we got a huge debt and look at us. We're still going. You know, like a horse, when you put those kind of eye shields on the side, like, we're just like, keep stomping, keep chomping, keep going forward. Don't look to the sides, honey. We don't need to see the poverty. It's all going to have to implode sooner or later, you guys. You know? Anyway. Flocasso says, this is a powerful conversation. Thanks for using your platform for good. You're welcome. And thank you for listening and for sharing your... Uh, stories as well with us. Uh, Rumzia says, Tamara admitted in a video that when she started, she was in debt either 10K plus or 40K. Can't remember the exact number, but she was definitely faking it till she made it. But that's a whole other concept. You know, fake it till you make it. Uh, there's many different ways in which one can fake it till one makes it. You don't necessarily have to go into debt to fake something. Faking something doesn't have to be connected with money spending, with actual money spending. You can fake to be spending money. That's a possibility. That's what's something you can do without actually spending the money. But I don't know her private life story, nor can I be so frank and say, nor do I frankly give a damn. I don't know. Is that too rude to say? Uh, but uh, anyway... You know, I have my haters, so whatever. Might as well get another few. Running a YouTube channel isn't cheap, that's for sure. Oh, vSense, don't I know it. <laughs> Running a YouTube channel is super expensive, you guys. It's insane. Insanely expensive. I mean, everything you got to go through all the time. I mean, uh, the light bulbs explode, you know, the breakdown, the, the, the microphone breaks, the batteries expire. You got to buy new batteries. The computer is too full. You got to keep buying ex external hard drives. You know, you got to do your research on topics. Certain things you got to read up on are not for free. You got to pay to get access to stuff all the time. Makeup, looks. You got to look somewhat present. At least maybe I'm wrong. You know, uh, I, I, I wish to be somewhat presentable to you guys when I'm on camera. But, you know, I've seen channels where people like sit there, show their fingernails are like this long and black underneath and... And they talk to you about some luxury item. I'm like, girl, you could have at least cleaned your nails. I mean, at least, you know. Minim you know, but that all costs money too. So... Cinnamon Roll says, Tamara wasn't in debt. Her parents were there and pharmacists. Oh, their pharmacists make a lot of money. It's really different when you don't have a family that is wealthy. Mm. It's like with artists, you guys. No artist today. And, and, and don't let them. They're going to try to tell you. No, that's not true. Look at Vincent van Gogh. Look at Mozart. They all died. Beethoven, they all died. They were all poor. Today, not in the past. Today, you cannot become a famous artist if you don't come from a rich family. No matter how talented you are, forget about it. Forget about it. No. And whoever tells you otherwise, they're lying to your face. David Anderson says, I'm no prize pig, but dirty fingernails really gross me out too. Yeah. And you guys, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying if you're watching a video on YouTube about a farmer that makes videos about raising farm animals and, and working in the field, of course their hands are going to look the part. I have no issue with that. I have no issues with that. That is part of your work. That's part of your life. Your hands are not going to be pampered if you're working all day in the fields, obviously. And then if you're making a video, 
uh, if you're making a YouTube channel about the work that you do as a farmer, I expect a certain aesthetic for sure. Okay. But if you're sitting making videos about, you know, perfumes and bag reviews and, and then <coughs> you lift your arm and it's like your, your nails aren't cut and, and, and they're like completely, you know, unclean. I'm like, well, or, or if you have a beauty channel about makeup and, and, and skin care, then we expect a certain aesthetic to go with the content that you're making. Um, Liz M says, oh no, I confess I watch you for your content and that you look clean and polished. I can't stand someone talking about luxury without being prepared. Thank you, Liz M. Yeah, it's important to, to, to be clean, you know. Uh, Adrian, very, very true. It's all a uh, success in the arts. It's all about connections. Carissa says, so true. Fame is paid to play these days. Mem says, it's the Nepo babies who have it best. Oh, nepotism. At, uh, and we're living in the era of the Nepo babies. We have almost no new stars rising to the occasion. It's usually children of stars that are becoming stars. Uh, yeah, Jolie, of course a plant channel is going to involve dirt. Sometimes people have no understanding or compassion. Most of the time they don't, Mahor, especially online. They seem to not see other people as human beings, but just as things. Natalie Deed says, yes, so true, 99% of the time. Jolie says, clean, bare minimum. Tipa says, except for Chanel, chip nail polish, we can do that, wink, wink. That's an aesthetic. That's a grunge aesthetic that has a reason of being. Like to put on nail polish and have it chip that has a whole aesthetic that goes with it, and it has a raison d'être, as you might say. Uh, OCD cannot stand weird voices. <laughs> Context is important, David. Yes, Cecilia says, I've seen some luxury YouTubers posting in their pajamas from their bedrooms or kitchens. It really gets me. <laughs> like, like, absolutely, let yourself go. Hey, F. Del Mar, how's it going, sweetie? Kev says, it takes a lot of money to look like a struggling artist. Who said that it takes a lot of money to look that poor, that poor or that cheap? Liz M says, I came across a YouTuber. She lifted her arm and you could see her hairy armpit. She just said sorry and continued. Well, I have nothing against ladies owning their fluff. I That doesn't gross me out, you guys. I don't know. Maybe I'm strange, but um, I think that's the beauty industry forcing women to spend more money in beauty products to shave their whole bodies. Um, you know, I, I have nothing against uh, ladies uh, with hairy legs or armpits, really. I, I don't I don't find that. Uh, it's nature. It's natural. You got hairs. It's totally fine, you guys. You know. FN says, I watch because you're eloquent and smart, like really smart. Thank you, FN. Hi, Minnie Jeffrey. How's it going, sweetie? Nico S. Hi, Nico. It's crazy that with the internet and all that advancement, nepotism is stronger than ever, especially in fashion and art. Yeah, it's shocking, isn't it? Because I think those circles at that high level of art and fashion, they're still not influenced by uh, social media. In those high, high circles, it's still real human connections and families that have been in the business for a long time. They still hold the power, not social media. Oh, Louis. Thank you, Louis. La Jota says it was Dolly Parton. She said it takes a lot of money to look this cheap. Nico S. says hairy armpits, so French, so chic. <laughs> Nepo babies everywhere these days. Cinnamon Roll says it's porn. Dolly the legend, Kimberly. They're fluff. I love that, says Janie. Jolie says, it's a shame, but uh, it's beat into our heads to be baby bear. Yeah, Mahora says, women are human beings too. They have body hair. Exactly. And it's totally fine to grow your body hair if you want to, ladies. Don't let anybody bully you into thinking that you have to spend a ton of money into constantly grooming, shaving. I mean... You know, Oshidi says, I find men with beards with no pubes. <laughs> Fabulous, Dolly. Corey says, I used to work in opera. There are no poor opera singers. 
Backstage, different story. But performers, they all they are all rich kids. Tipa says, not gonna lie, not comfy talking about body hair. <laughs> to each their own. Everybody handles their body in general in a different way. And this has to do with a body shape, uh, with body hair, with texture, with a lot of different things, you guys. So obviously we're all dealing with a lot. So it's not, it goes without saying, uh, I think our bodies and our psychology in the society that we live in, and it's a relatively bully, strong society, all of us, I feel, have more or less have, have, have had to, at some point in life, go through some form of body shaming, bullying. So we all have luggage to carry when it comes to our bodies. Uh, and, and that's that. <laughs> but then I also say, if we all have issues... Let's just acknowledge them and move on. You know, it's something we should use the fact that we all have issues as a bonding moment rather than something that separates us. Because if you open up about your issues, then actually you connect with people. So, yeah. <laughs> Tipa says, it's like toes for you, Jacob. Yeah, toes gross me out. <laughs> I don't like toes. I don't care if they're clean or not. I don't like them. <laughs> they just, they wiggle. They move. They're very tiny. Hmm. They look like aliens attached to a foot. Oh, well, but that's just my phobia. Uh, so you see what I mean? Everybody has their own weird things. <laughs> Linda says, my father always made my sister and I not to be ashamed of our hairy legs. He saw nothing wrong with them. My aunt used to uh, wear stockings with a shaven hair, lol. Uh, he is so earthy and embracing. David says, hair being gendered is weird to me. I agree with you, David. I also think perfumes being gendered is super weird. Mahora loving the beaver. Jolie says, bum bum. David says, I meant gender terrorists rock. <laughs> Brandy S says, you talking perfume took me back to what started me down the Lux path. Mid 1980s, a 14 year old me confidently purchased a bottle of Yves Saint Laurent opium. Julie Simple Opinion says, oh, Mahora, the Biva. v says, on a lighter note, do you twerk when you get drunk? Joking. <laughs> I'm really bad at twerking. Corey says, my piggies went to market, the barbecue. Caroline says, best content creator. Thank you for always delivering, Dick. Thank you, Caroline. F. Mar says, it's hard sometimes to move on. My mom gave me an eating disorder, and it's so hard to put that behind. That is something we can never put behind, that is something we have to learn to live with day by day. That's the only way to, I feel, maybe I'm wrong, to cope with it is to acknowledge that it's there, that it's always gonna be there, and love yourself, you know, every day. And just like say, but I care about you, you know? But I love you, you know, I, I want to try to love you more. And knowing that the disorder is there, looming in the, in the background, trying to find a sneaky moment where, where it can push its way to the forefront. And you have to kind of always battle to keep it in the back. It's tough, but it's a, it's a whole life's work. Corey says, eating disorders suck. I haven't purged in 21 years, but when I'm stressed, it's so tempting. Oh, no, Corey, don't, don't do it. Don't do it. Corey K says, Jacob, that's so funny. I had a co-worker that was obsessed with toe cleavage. Some things you just can't forget. Toe cleavage? I'm fine with toe cleavage. I don't like the tips of the toes. <laughs> like frogs. Anyway, let's, uh, Jacob, you are such a kick-ass, awesome person. So smart and empathetic. Thanks for being you. Such a breath of fresh air. Thank you, Ramzia. Thank you so much. Mahora says, so sorry, Jolie. I hit you by accident. Oh, no, Mahora. Bring back Jolie. So let's, Corey says, I won't do it, but the temptation, the feeling of relief. But we go. Just the tips, Katana. <laughs> 
Speaking of tips, toe cleavage used to bother me so much. You can tip your host here, but also we're going to talk about the next topic. Hold on, let me just like freshen up the glossiness. FN says, since we speak about hair, can you do a short episode on your hair? I have exactly the same hairdo. I'm a surgeon and people kind of expect me to look in a certain way, but I refuse. Mm. Um, well, I guess you wear a bun and then you have your surgeon cap on when you're operating. But uh, I guess in your free time, you let the hair loose, loosey-goosey. There's not much you can do. People are going to judge. You know how people are. They always judge. People judge. They always judge. Yeah. So you have the long hair and then you do the bun when you're operating. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, you got up. You got to work that bun as much as you can and try not to harm your hair while you're making the bun. Because the times I have broken a hair or two every when I do the bun and then it, long hair is high maintenance. It's a lot of work and it's so ridiculous because, I mean, why do we do this to ourselves? <clears throat> There's nothing you can do about it. People are going to judge you. They judge me all the time for my long hair. And I'm not a, and I'm not even a surgeon. So, what are you gonna do? Are they judging you for being like unprofessional because you have the long hair, or are they like pulling some weird gender homophobia on you? Because, like, look, a guy with long hair. Like, what's the issue? Oh, hi, Phoenix mom. How's it going, sweetie? Lunch break. Yay! Thank you, Kev. Hair's looking really good today. Pantan worthy. Oh, FN. Really? They say you're not trustworthy because as a surgeon because you have long hair. People are vile. Like, so the first, oh no, the second doctor I saw at the ER when I went in, uh, went to the to the ER before my operation, which was several weeks ago now. The second doctor had a bun, had long hair, and he was also a surgeon. Uh, so the first doctor was a female doctor. The second doctor was a male doctor uh, with a bun. And I personally, I felt n better when I saw him because the bun made him look homey. Homey as in like home, like comfortable, cozy. Because he was all fluffed up in a bun and he, you know, he looked very cozy and I relaxed. So the fact that he actually he had a bun relaxed me. So we're all different. I don't know. Everybody reacts differently to these things. You know what I mean? So for me, it was a good thing. But yeah. Nice buns, right, Mahora? Ah, uh, Corey also says, the hell, I would trust you more. And I've had lots of surgeons. Kev says, do they think the hair is sucking up all the anatomy knowledge? <laughs> That's a good one, Kev, right? Corey says, surgeons with long hair make me feel like they are more down to earth and not as cocky. I trust them more. Yes, I, that's the same feeling I had. Uh... F. Delmar says, once I applied for a job and handed them my resume or curriculum vitae, they told me that I would need to cut my hair. I snatched back my resume and left. 
People expect the, an older gray-haired guy or something. I don't know. And colleagues think I'm stoned or something. Oh, because you're you're young. I don't know how old you are, but uh, so you're younger, and they think because you have long hair, you're a stoner. Well, I can tell you this: I have really long hair, and I don't use any drugs. So that's another one of those myths that we can now debunk. Long hair doesn't mean that you're a stoner, y'all. David, you're completely right. Younger people are becoming professionals, and so things are going to change. Deal with it, people. Period. Period. Speaking of change, let's do the next topic. I'm ready now, y'all. Uh, let's film the next topic. Uh, <clears throat> Hi, everybody. Jacob here. Welcome back to the Fashion Bunker. Hermes and its lawsuit, but also Hermes and its Birkins and Kellys. Somebody out there apparently developed a formula how to sec securely secure yourself a Birkin and take it home from the Hermes store. How is this connected to the lawsuit? Let's find out together. First, subscribe to my channel. If you haven't already, push the join button next to the subscription button. Become a member today. Gain access to extra perks. You can also join me on Patreon. Super Jacob all spelled together there as well for extra perks. Thank you to my members and patrons who already pledged. This video is being filmed live in front of a live virtual audience. I live stream several times a week, so come join the fun and come join the chats. Everything I say in this video is for entertainment purposes only, not rooted in truths or facts. Everything's alleged and just my opinion. Thumb up the video if you're enjoying it as we hit that Hermes shame. Shame. This is the Frisbee of shame. Okay. Now listen, Linda. Several years ago, a young gentleman by the name of Michael Tonello wrote a book about how he about his experience as how he managed to create a formula to always get you a Birkin. Now, I'm going to post a link to this book in the description box underneath this video. It is a link to Amazon, so it is an affiliate link. If you wish to purchase the book, it's not going to cost you more, but I think a couple of cents <laughs> from the sales of the book might go to me. So thank you for your support. <laughs> And also, I want to thank Holly Grace for uh, sending me over this video interview that I watched. So, Holly, you know, you know, IYKYK. So, this is what will go, will go. Uh, Mr. Michael Tonello wrote a book called Bringing Home the Birkin. Not the bacon. I added that part. <laughs> Bringing Home the Birkin. And I wonder, and here's my theory, can this book which was issued several years ago, and it keeps getting reissued. Could this book potentially be utilized against Hermes in the lawsuit that is kind of building up in California? Hmm. Anneke in the chat says, oh, wow, I remember that book. Listen, Linda. So Michael's story, let me just quickly uh, tell you how this came to be. So he's a gentleman who's been living in the States and had no clue about Hermes, Birkins or whatever. He was, I don't even know what he was doing, but somewhere in the 90s, he uh, was going, to, he was living in New York, I believe, or some other city. And he was going to some gala event and he bought at Hermes, quick, no, Bergdorf Goodman's or another one of those shopping places, high-end, that also sold Hermes stuff. And he bought an Hermes scarf or tie in silk, wore it for that one red carpet event or gala, and then took it off the next morning, put it back in its box, forgot about it. Several years later, he moved to another city. And as he was unpacking, he found that Hermes silk item which he had no use for anymore. And then he says in this interview uh, that I watched on YouTube, he says, you know, 
I listed it on eBay and uh, because I didn't need it anymore. And it's just, you know, maybe somebody else would like it. And he was surprised, so he says, that the silk item sold for more than what he paid for it originally. And then he realized really quickly, as an entrepreneurial American would, it's all about the money, honey, he realized pretty soon, oh, wow, there's not many, this is in the 90s, there's not many Hermes boutiques in America. And a lot of people that have money and want Hermes do not live in a city where there is a boutique. So he started selling on secondhand websites, Hermes silk scarves, foulards, carrés. And he would always sell them at a profit. So he would keep going back to Hermes, buying a bunch of them and then reselling. I guess back then there was no reseller ban. <laughs> they weren't really on to him, apparently, allegedly. Of course, everything I say in this video is for entertainment purposes only, not rooted in truths or facts. Everything's alleged, just my opinion. So then he said that at one point, somebody, uh, kind of news spread of this guy who was the Hermes silk whisperer. <laughs> and then somebody asked him at one point, hey, I have a client, uh, famous actress or actor, I don't know, wants a Birkin, blah, blah, blah. And uh, he's like, oh, what's a Birkin? Like, apparently he didn't even know what it was, didn't even care. So he said, yeah, sure, I'll try to get a Birkin. So he goes to Hermes and says, enters Hermes and asks for a Birkin. And they look at him like, no, they, we don't have a Birkin. And there's a waiting list for a Birkin. You know, Samantha Jones in Sex in the City in that episode where, you know, with Lucy Liu and the whole shebang happens, you know, very Samantha Jones moment. So he enters MS, asks for Burke, and they're like, no, there's a waiting list. Then he found out later on that in some Hermes boutiques, there's a waiting list to get on the waiting list for a Burke. And he said none of the Hermes boutiques in which he put his name down on the waiting list, none of those boutiques ever called him back in all of these decades that have passed since he started shopping there. But he said that at one point, he started traveling a lot all over Europe, America, South America. Like he mentioned many cities he went to uh, where there were Hermes boutiques. And he said he would always enter every Hermes boutique uh, that he would encounter. Uh, and he would always ask for a Birkin. Nobody would have a Birkin. They would always say, no, 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 no. Until one day, he said he uh, had a list of uh, products that were ordered by some people that were, you know, requesting him to buy stuff for them. And they were mostly silk scarves, carrés, foulards. And so he entered an Hermes boutique and asked the sales associate. He had a list of things he needed. And they checked off of the list almost everything he wanted. So we're talking, I don't know, 10 scarves, more or less. So they're all in their separate boxes. So you can imagine they're all piled up, you know. And the sales associate is walking towards the cash register with the silk scarves. And he said, just as an afterthought, he didn't even think about it. Like, it wasn't strategical or anything in that moment. He just said to the sales associate, while the sales associate was about to ring up all those scarves and make him pay a lot of money for them, he said, hey, um, do you by any chance happen to have a Birkin? The sales associate stopped in their feet and said, let me check in the back. And just like that, he thought he figured out the formula of how to get a Birkin. And in fact, the sales associate went into the back, came back to the front with a huge orange box, took him to the side, lifted the lid, put the gloves on, took the Birkin out. He's like, yeah, great, wrap it up together with the scarves. Little did he know that the Birkin was crocodile. So they charged him back then, he said, $20,000 for it. And he didn't have that money on the credit card. So the credit card would have given him three weeks before they charged the money back. So he was panic moding because he's like, oh my God, I need to find somebody to buy this Birkin off me because I need to pay back my credit card bill immediately. And that's where this star came into play. 
uh, that famous person that uh, wanted a Birkin. So he contacted the contact of the, of the famous person and said, hey, I got a Birkin, I got a crocodile. And since he didn't know how rare they were, he said that his first Birkin sale, he didn't mark up the price a lot. He said he only marked it up by $5,000, which now he regrets. But then he says, thankfully, all ended up great because by marking it up so low, he delivered personally the Birkin to the star, to the famous person at the Ritz, apparently. And they became close because that star thought that he was not ripping them off. So the star started trusting him, and that famous person then opened up new doors for new clients for him. So he said he thought that maybe one of these silk scarves was a code. Like, is maybe one of the silk, like, do you have to purchase one particular silk scarf to unlock <laughs> the Birkin? So he had no clue. So the second Hermes boutique after the Birkin purchase that he went to, he says he literally took the same list with him uh, of scarves that he bought when he got offered the first Birkin offered again, when he got a lot, when he was allowed to purchase the first Birkin. So he says in the interview, he gave the same list of scarves to the new sales associate, tuck, 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 tuck. As they were walking towards the cash register, sales associate with all the scarves, he's like, uh, do you happen to have a Birkin as well as all of these other items that I'm just about to purchase? And lo and behold, the sales associate stops in their feet and says, let me check in the back. And lo and behold, just like that, sooner than later, they come out with an orange box and he gets a Birkin. So that's the strategy he started implementing and kept doing over and over and over and over again. Now, mind you, he's not a Birkin collector. He's a reseller. And he started building up his profile, started building up relationships to the sales associates, and also started building up relationships to the clients that he was selling these items to, to the point where he decided to write a book, which is the book we're talking about here. A link to the book down below. Get it on Amazon now. And he said the book was really popular when it was first released many years ago. By that time, he stopped purchasing at Hermes and reselling. Like, he got money elsewhere. He didn't have to do the reselling shtick anymore to survive, right? Because he said in the interview that he, with all the reseller gig he was doing with Hermes, like, he made millions flow. And I'm like, wow. And so he said when the book came out, it was successful and Hermes took note. And he said apparently he got intel that Hermes CEOs and higher ups sent an email, or back in the day it was also fax, with the title of the book, with an email stating to all the sales associates, Whoever enters the boutique and talks about the book, make it clear that the book was not written by Hermes. The book is not associated with the brand Hermes. We have nothing to do with this book. This is not how you can get a Birkin by, do it, by following these steps. And he thought he was blacklisted on top of that. Now, fast forward many years later, in this interview he says... One of the contacts that he had was frustrated because their client really wanted a Birkin and it was some famous person again and they could not get a Birkin ever. Every time they tried, they could not. And so they wanted to call in a favor and say, hey, can you please get back into the resale business just this one time and try to get a Birkin for my client? And he said, I haven't done it in like 10, 20 years now. I don't know if it's going to work. I don't think so because rules and regulations change. All of their, you know, the sales associates have changed. The higher ups that work there have changed. It's probably going to be a totally different structure by now. They might have a different way of deciding who gets the bag or not. He's like, but you know what? Let me try. It doesn't cost anything to go and try. 
So in the interview, what was shocking to me is he said, and this happened just a short while ago, he said, I went into Hermes, I bought a ton of scarves, small leather goods or whatever. As we were going to the cash register to pay, I stopped and said to the sales associate, do you happen to also have a Birkin? Sales associate stopped, said, let me check in the back and let me talk to the store manager. And lo and behold, they came back with a Birkin. <laughs> now, why do I think that this book could be used in the lawsuit? Because if he has any way of proving all that he writes in his book, if they were to call him as a witness as a professional witness because he's a published author, blah, 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 self-proclaimed reseller, if his testimony were to prove that all of those Hermes boutiques were telling him no Birkin, no Birkin, up until the moment when he started purchasing a ton of side products, scarves and blah, 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 and before he pays them, he says, before I pay, first, do you have a Birkin? And then the Birkin magically appears. I mean, if I were in that jury, I would have a few things to think about before I would give my jury duty vote to Hermes as opposed to the people who are claiming that Hermes wants you to buy something else before they allow you to buy the Birkin and the Kelly. Very, very interesting. Now, this book is fascinating. If you were to rewind several years back on my channel, and we're talking 2016, 2017, I have spoken about, not the book because I didn't know about the book, but I've spoken about this strategy already. Uh, it's something that has been kind of known uh, in the luxury community, especially if you're shopping in Europe and you were to purchase a ton of things, but right before you pay them, you ask like, do you also have a Birkin or a Kelly? They might just offer you to buy one, offer you again the wrong, I'm indoctrinated, not offer you. They might allow you to buy one. Uh, and this was the case back in the day. Now in Europe, they've changed the rules quite a bit because you have to make a wish appointment, but they're making it very clear in Europe because they don't want to get sued. They say in Europe, everybody can write an email to Hermes to ask for a wish appointment regardless from their purchase history. And if Hermes has an open slot for a wish appointment within 30 days of your asking for the wish appointment, then you will be granted a wish appointment. At the wish appointment, you ask for the bag you would like, and then Hermes takes up to one year, one and a half years to fulfill that wish, and then you pay the bag when the bag arrives. <coughs> Esclo, pardon me, I'm still recovering from the cold. As close as possible to the specifications that you've given them at your wish appointment. But how to bypass all of that, according to this gentleman who wrote this book, he says you can bypass all of that by purchasing a ton of stuff that day, and before you pay it, you ask for the Birkin. Now, my question to you guys is, do you think that this could be used in this book could be used in the lawsuit, and his testimony could be used in the lawsuit as the witness to the prosecution? A and B. And then C... Would you ever do the following? Tell your, tell the, enter a random Hermes boutique. Tell the sales associate, I want uh, this carré, this scarf, this foulard, that pair of shoes. I want uh, these earrings. I want that bracelet. And you're walking towards the cash register with all this stuff. And then the sales associate worked, folded everything together. They're put everything in the boxes, and before you pay, you ask for a Birkin. If they say we don't have one, here's my question to you. If they say in that moment, no, sorry, we don't have one, would you then tell them, oh, really? Okay, sorry, my bad. Then, you know what? I changed my mind. I don't want to purchase all these things. 
Sorry. Sorry. Uh, sorry. Yeah, no, I miscalculate. And I, you know what? I actually don't need any of these. Th thank you, though. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Bye. Would you do that or would you be too embarrassed and you would like still pay for the stuff without getting the ver Like, what would you we'll go, we'll go. Kev is like, Michael Tonello to the stand, right? Shani D says, Hermes is probably deleting his account as we speak, honey. Rizology says, yes, I would. Shani says, yes, sorry. I would also say no to pur the purchase. <laughs> MJ, MJ says, yes, sorry. I will cancel my purchases. <laughs> Janie says, that would be savage. And don't forget, do all that while you're wearing your Super Jacob aspirational t-shirt. IYK, YK. Let me know your thoughts and prayers down below. Until next time, never forget to never give up on love. Subscribe and thumb up this video if you've enjoyed it. Bye. Oh my God, Gigi Luna, you are savage. Gigi Luna says, I would only get the bag. Okay, wait, hold on. We got to film this. We got to film this. Hold on, you guys. This this, this just made me think about something. Gigi Luna just wrote, I would only get the bag. Imagine you're, all that stuff piled up at the cash register. Scarves, shoes, da, 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 da. And then you say, you also have a Birkin. They say, yeah. Then they bring out the Birkin. And then you say, oh, you got the Birkin? How much is it? They tell you the price and then you say, you know what? It's really expensive. So let me just get the Birkin. I'm not going to get the scarves and the other stuff. I'll just, just ring up the Birkin. That would be a great way to prove in the lawsuit that Hermes doesn't want to sell you the Birkin if you don't buy the other stuff. Because, because could you imagine? Could you imagine pulling this stunt at Hermes? And telling them, oh, wait, hold on a minute. I actually don't want to don't want to buy the scarves anymore. I just want the Birkin now. Because you obviously have it. You just showed it to me. You're offering to me to buy it. And imagine the Hermes sales associate then telling you, oh, sorry, we cannot sell you the Birkin if you don't buy these other things. Well, then, bam. Then you would have the proof that they are indeed pushing these parallel extras. Oh, Somebody needs to take some candid camera into one of these stows and get him and get him good because that would be a good moment indeed. Take those, yes, Shani D, put that, take, wear those glasses with the camera. And <laughs> Case closed, honey. Let me know your thoughts and prayers down below. What do you think? Should we do it? Ooh! Should we do it or don't do it? Let me know your thoughts and prayers down below. Subscribe. Get the book through the link down below. Never give up on love. Bye. Gigi, Gigi Luna. Damn it. That was good. That was good, Gigi. You nailed it. You nailed it. Brenda says, I'd be curious to know what they would say in that case. I, I wouldn't too. Corey K is like, brilliant. Jolie says, I want to go in, pile up a bunch of scarves and get a phone call. Be right back. <laughs> Nancy says, salesperson would have to sell the Birkin, but I would never have the nerve. Xavier says, oh my God, hysterical. The Frisbee of shade. It has been thrown. Shade. Shade. <laughs> Kev says, maybe one of the luxury TikTokers would try and film secretly. No, because they no, because these luxury TikTokers, they don't want to do anything to uh, potentially uh, jeopardize their sponsorships and stuff. They're always going to be sponsorship friendly. They're never going to, you know, they're never going to put themselves out there. That's why they're so annoying to me to watch all these people. Everything is good. Everything is great. Everything is fine, you guys. Oh, my God. Everything is amazing. Isn't everything great? Isn't everything great? Like, we all have enough money. Everything is amazing. I just I just came from the Bahamas. Flew first class. I made a little video for you sitting in first class. Like, this is the food we got. Okay, can we just talk for a second about 
that type of content creator, that type of content creator, I can tell you this from personal experience. I travel a lot. I move around. I do stuff. I cannot, for the love of me, vlog. It doesn't come natural to me because I'm so focused on life when it's happening. So when I watch some of these channels, some of them that have millions of followers, all they constantly do is, is, is hold their, their, their phone. And they're everywhere they go. They're like, hi, everybody. They're walking in the supermarket they're filming. They're in the car they're filming. They have no private life. Like everything becomes this. And everything is like, hi, hi, yeah. And everything, oh my God. Everything. I tried a vlog like that. And I'm not saying filming little snippets. I'm not saying doing a shopping vlog now and then. That's different. I'm talking about those YouTubers that film their entire life. Every step of their life. Hi, good morning, you guys. I just woke up. Oh, we're just going to make a coffee now. Let's do a coffee together. Okay, now I'm going to go to the meeting. I'm going to take you to the meeting. Okay, here's my theory. In order to be so obsessed with yourself to do such vlogging, you got to be a sociopath. Like you have to be a sociopath. Because something has to be wrong with these people. I mean, what sort? think about it. What sort of internal drive must you have in order to constantly film yourself for the sake of views, attention, love, emotions of the people? Like, it's like you become this leech this vampire of emotions that you're constant that's a sociopath to me. When I see a YouTube channel that is based on let me take my camera with me every day, all day, through my life with you, I'm like, oh, whoa, 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 this person, oh, oh no, stay away from me. I don't want to know them. I don't want to ever in my life encounter them or see them. It freaks me out. Freaks me out. Hey, Alt Pink Ray, how's it going, sweetie? I heard you're coming to Teruko's show on Saturday. Alaya Max says the Truman Show. Shani D says, we get that type here all of the time. I see them on their cameras all of the time while walking on street. I, I, I can't. And yes, MJ, MJ, it is so stressful. I tried it. It's... Like, you have to be crazy in order to be able to do that, so to sustain that, to keep doing it every day. Flo Caso says it becomes an addiction to them. Their identity is tied to the likes and, and views. Oof. Tipa says there is a DIYer that constantly films herself day and night, like 12 FB Real stories per day. I couldn't. I mean, I I would I would just be like a raisin, shriveled up, dried out, nothing left in me, no life left in me. All those content creators are super, superfluous, says Gigi Luna. You are not. Oh, you are real and deep in what you do. Well, you know, I mean, I have my superficial moments, like everybody else does. I'm not saying you. I'm not saying you can never be superficial, but I'm I'm saying, how can you find the energy to constantly be? Setting everything up. And just look at them when they go to a coffee shop. And when they film themselves at the counter, ordering and paying for the coffee, but their camera is set at a table, filming from a distance themselves, paying for the freaking coffee. That requires setting up. That requires them actually taking the time to be like, okay, now I'm going to film myself getting the coffee. Okay, hold on. Let me put the camera there. And then they act walking to the counter to order the coffee, to edit that scene into their vlog. I mean, 
This is more than just holding the camera while you're doing your shit. This is more like, okay, let's take it a step further and let's like storyboard my entire day. It's insane. Like, it's insane. Like, you got to be a sociopath because, like, you're not living life anymore. Like, you're, you're acting. You're, you're acting. You're constantly thinking, okay, camera's going to be here. I'll position myself here. Okay, let me reenact buying the coffee again. It's insane. Just watch next time. You, you don't notice it because it flows in a vlog. But if you really stop to notice, you're going to start realizing that there are some scenes where they're holding the camera and you can feel it wobbling and they're alone. It's not like when they have somebody helping them. That's a different story. But then sometimes they're going to just cut in a scene where they're not holding the camera. But you know then and there that that scene, they had to study it and storyboard it first. Um, like, what will go, will go. <laughs> dot, dot, or asterisk, asterisk says Kardashian started this. They did not start this, but uh, they definitely are not helping the cause. Um, anyway. I'll be at the Hyperion Lyric Theater this Saturday if my cold allows me. I mean, I am getting better, but you know, just you're you're warned. <laughs> if you if you want to come up and say hi, I might still have the cold, but I'm not gonna. If I feel really bad and I have the cold, I don't want to infect anybody. So if I feel bad, bad, I'm not gonna come on Saturday. But I'll let you know because I'm live streaming on Saturday before the show. But let me cue in my friend Teruko's. Um, <clears throat> uh, theater piece. It's a one man or one woman show and one titi show, little doggy, made in America. Um, dear friend and artist Teruko Nakajima at the Lyric Hyperion in Los Angeles this Saturday, April 13th, 7.30 p.m. The show is wonderful, heartwarming. Tickets are only $20, by the way. She does not want to rip anybody off. I told her I think you should have charged at least $40. Because, like, she works her ass off in this show. But she's like, no, no, I really want people to be able to afford and see it. She's really, really an angel of a person. And Titi, her little doggy, is also on stage. Look at all the awards that she has won. Uh, Made in America is a wonderful, wonderful autobiographical one-woman show. You will laugh, you will cry. I'm going to go to see the show. I am not in the show. I'm just a spectator, but uh, in case you do see me walking uh, through the um, entrance uh, of the theater or uh, passing by the, uh, um, what you might call it, the uh, ticket counter or wherever I'll be, you know, feel free to say hi. Uh, I will be mingling a little bit after the show with Teruko. You know, after the show is over, Teruko will go backstage and then if she's feeling fine then she'll come back to the foyer in the front and we'll say hi uh, so you can get your tickets at www.terukonakajima.com that is Teruko's website that is www.terukonakajima.com and then she, you can book your tickets there. Uh, the first show she had at the Lyric Hyperion was about a month ago, sold out. That's why the theater asked her uh, if she would like to come again to do a second show. Could you imagine? It sold out completely. Uh, they actually had to add extra chairs. Uh, that's how full packed it was. And uh, so we're super excited about this. Uh, but of course, you know, for an artist, and uh, you know, she's alone. This is her one-man show, uh, it costs a lot to book a theater. So that's why with every ticket purchase, uh, you help to pay the rent uh, of the theater is basically what's happening. So you're not making anybody rich with this. You're just making this theater piece happen uh, because it does cost a lot to rent a the theater. So there you have it, guys. Uh, it's $20 a ticket. 
Teruko is going to be performing this Saturday, April 13th at 7.30 p.m. at the Lyric Hyperion in Los Angeles. Uh, I hope I'll be there. If I'm healthy enough, I will be there. And uh, But before the show begins, uh, earlier in the day, L.A. time, I will be live streaming on my channel. We have our Saturday live stream. So I'll give you an update on my health situation on Saturday, and I'll let you know how I feel. I can tell you that so far today I'm feeling better than I was yesterday. So here's hoping that I'm going to be healing nicely until Saturday so that I can join you all for the show. I'm optimistic. I'm very optimistic. I'm very optimistic. Uh, oh, there you go. Shani D says, oh, Cali is the closest state to here, even though it's a five-hour plane ride. Oh, ch five hours, it's still, uh, it's still a bit much because then you need like, what, like two hours to get to the airport. You got to be at the airport two hours before the flight. That's four hours. <sighs> that, that makes it already nine hours journey. I don't know. Figure out if you, you know, if you have the energy to, to, to do such a huge long trip. But um, there you go. Thank you guys so much. Uh, hopefully I'll see you there. This show is amazing. I mean, you will cry, you will laugh. It's, it doesn't last long. It's around about an hour long uh, and uh, it's autobiographical. So boy, what a life Teruko has had. Let me tell you, <laughs> what a life. There you go. Thank you guys so much. Uh, for, for, you know, listening. I just want to promote my friend as much as I can, obviously, because it's coming this Saturday. So I want her to sell out again. And thank you guys so much for tuning into the show as well, to this show here in our little AI-generated fashion bunker. I hope you had fun. I want to say thank you to the mods for keeping us safe. Today we had Kev in the house from the get-go. Thank you, Kev, for being such a trooper. Uh, Audrey joined us at one point as well uh, when she woke up, and uh, Mahora was with us. Was Gloria Rethinos there as well? I, don't know. I know Debbie was sleeping. Debbie was very tired today. So we had the mods coming in and out, but Kev was there with us through thick and thin throughout the entire live stream. Thank you, Kev, so much. Thank you to the mods. Hit it, Bubbles. A special thanks to the mods in the Thank you so much. And also, I want to I want to say thank you so much to everybody who also helped support the Fashion Bunker. You know, Teresa McGuire being our wonderful lover and support. Thank you so much. Nan Z. <coughs> who else was like our super donators? This, uh, Despina as well. Everybody, thank you. It really means the world. Uh, right now, I am working on uh, getting for the Fashion Bunker a new computer. Uh, and uh, new spotlights. So just to let you guys know, your money is not getting lost in my private purchases. The tips that do arrive in the fashion bunker stay in the fashion bunker. Uh, the other money I earn through my work is what I then use to purchase my own luxury crap, <laughs> my own luxury addiction. <laughs> so don't you worry, guys. Also, uh, I'm working on getting a teleprompter. That's going to be really helpful for me in the future uh, because a teleprompter it can be positioned right next to the camera. So I don't have to keep looking away all the time because right now I'm looking at a TV to read my chats. And a teleprompter will make it just that more professional because it's kind of direct into the camera almost. So there you have it. Uh, just a little tiny disclaimer. And now let's do the we'll go, we'll go moment. We'll go, we'll go, Bubbles. F. Delmar says, I'm glad to see you live tonight. I wasn't in the best of spirits. Well, I hope you're in better spirits now, sweetie. We spent four hours together. We'll go, we'll go. Living Ferret, coming up next. I'm living Ferret, living Ferret. Living Ferret, living Ferret. Living Ferret, living Ferret. 
The frisbee of shame, of shame. Oh, Audrey's back. There she is. And now we're dying, Ferret. Oh, that ferret be dying, honey. Oh, that ferret. Oh, we die in ferret. Die in ferret, darling. Oh, there you are. Baby Yoda. <clears throat> Who are you together with today? <laughs> oh, they're best of buddies. They're best buddies. Chucky and Baby Yoda. Chucky and Baby Yoda, yeah, they're not stabbing each other anymore. They're not, e oh, well, although, Chucky. <laughs> Chucky, why is that, why do you have the knife there? <laughs> uh, yeah, the... <laughs> Maybe I was like, no, 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 no. You know the cat videos where the cat's like, no, 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 no. They scare each other all the time. It's never a dull moment in the fashion bunker. Cha. Hit it, Bubbles. No, 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 no. Chow, 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 chow. <laughs> oh, baby Yoda, never a dull moment. Such a pip, such a pip. Well, you guys, that's our show. I hope you had fun today. I hope I could bring some, I don't know. I mean, yeah, okay, I'm a little bit sick, but I still hope we managed to laugh a little today. We had a serious moment. We had, you know, we have serious conversations. We have lighthearted conversations, you know, cathartic process, darling, cathartic process. We begin the journey in one spot. We end in a totally different spot, grown. And uh, I hope you had fun. Hi, David Allen Green. You make me laugh so much, thanks. Oh, thank you, sweetie. And I hope you have a wonderful rest of your week and a great beginning into the weekend. I have a great rest of your week. Jacob says, Teresa, I feel better. Thank you, my love. Also, you too, sweetie. Heal with the eye. Um, and uh, have a w wonderful rest of your week. And I, I shall see you all hopefully on Saturday for the pre-show. Uh, this Saturday's pre-show will be exclusive to Tier 2 YouTube members of my channel, as well as my Tier 2 patrons. Uh, the pre-show is a live stream that happens before the main live stream, where we go in deeper into certain topics and private stuff. And then we have the main show after that, which is the live stream open up to everybody. So, hopefully I shall see you all on Saturday. Until then, never forget to never give up on love. Love you loads. Take care. Bye.